All right. And we are live. And I believe I have my sister in. I'm going to add her in. She's going to be my right-hand sister. There she is. And I'm going to tag her. On How Facebook. about on Facebook? I'm about to tag you right now. <laughs> I'm going to say I'm with you. And you're going to share it with your friends. And I'm going to share it. I'm with OPB and all my various go uh, Facebook jail profiles. And we're going to be talking about it. Oprah, do you want to do the introduction while I'm tagging and everything? And you yeah, but so I'm trying to make sure I understand how this works. Okay. You're a guest and I just tagged you on Facebook. You may see it now. Feel free to save it. Um, mm. I have a lot of different um, accounts. So I'm sharing and I'm going to add my friends in and I know they'll come in as they can, but we're gonna talk about it today. African-Americans ain't African. Forget what you think you knew. Uh, all the Columbus myths, let it go. And I wanted everyone to just know where my sister and I are in the process because a lot of people with pan-African ideology, um, they get really confused. They think that we're, we're ashamed of being slaves. And uh, so we're gonna talk about all the myths that come along with that. So we're just taking some minutes right now to add our friends in, tag our friends. And so, great. Um, unless the people in, because they, they wanted to check it out. And then they want to know who my sister is. They want to know who, who your sister is. Great. So you can also go in and, and add people to your, from your messenger once you're inside. Just really take some time to, uh, yeah, let me go inside. I'm trying to, but Facebook just kicked me out for some stupid reason. Okay, but you are but you are live, and we'll worry about that later. So everybody, come on in. We're gonna, I'm gonna share, get to Facebook. I can't share it to our messengers. Let as many people know. I think this is a great way to kick off uh, Black History Month. I think this is a great way to uh, just set the record straight. So I'm gonna do that, and I got two accounts I got to do open. So this might. This might, should have had a little bit of music going, but um, this is a very serious uh, thing that's happening right now with our people. So I want to make sure that I respect that. Okay. Because I think once we're off, we're off. And good luck if you can get us. And then they can always watch the replays and things like that. So I just wanted to ping my friends in. Hey, Erica Moore, how are you? Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm just letting some friends in the background know that my sister Oprah Brown is going to be a guest today. And if I need to <clears> cut <throat> away to some um, information, pull up any documents for you all, um, we could do that too. Um, great. And I'm going to share it out. Were you able to share it, sister? I, I, I haven't been able to get in Facebook. Now all of a sudden you can't get in Facebook? Yes. So try maybe your mobile device. No, I'm doing it. I'm, I'm just at the reset my password and everything. Good gosh. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get us started. And maybe we can shoot over to a video. And then, um, or, or not, I don't know. So I don't know where to begin. But um, if we have any questions come in, definitely. Um... Hi, Crystal <gasps> Spalding. How are you? Crystal Spalding is an amazing sister. And hopefully I can get her to be a guest on the show as well. Um, we've been talking about it a lot on Clubhouse, about our indigenous roots and, and things like that. So um, first, happy Black History Month, happy Chinese New Year, all the good things that are happening on with this new moon. Uh, blessings to you, each and every single last one of you. Um, this is my sister, Oprah Brown. I'm your lady, Lila Brown. And we wanted to talk about it, just where we are in the process. Hopefully we can get um, some friends to come in and we can go from there. So first and foremost, the uh, title is African Americans Ain't African. Sister, once you share the video, you should be good. Um, and we can just go into the discussion. And I did share the video, but it's yeah. not, my people are not in here. Yeah, they'll, they'll come and then go into the video and then that share button, share it as a messenger. And let's see. Yeah. Great. Sweepy just texted me. <laughs> uh, speaking of Sweepy, I think that's a great place to start. Um, we actually, so this is what happened. And I'll, I'll tell the story while my sister's working out her mechanical issues. So basically, 
One year, my sister and I, being our hotep's selves, decided that we didn't want to uh, participate in Thanksgiving. And so basically, um, so basically, we decided we were going to go to a certain part of Kansas and we were going to meet with our great aunt. So our uh, aunt told us, and we've been hearing rumors, that the Bureau of Indian Affairs had visited her and actually, gratitude, gratitude, thank you, um, and actually told her that your family is entitled to some land and some money and you all are not capitalizing on it. So basically, we were like, huh? And so we were just thinking, skip Thanksgiving, you know, because we didn't feel in our spirits to ever celebrate. It's just something that we just grew up, didn't we didn't celebrate. I mean, we might observe it just because of the day off or whatever in school, but that was pretty much it. But so basically, we get there, and she was like, yeah, um, them Indian people, <laughs> you know, old people, them Indian people came by, and they talked to me. And uh, I said, we were like, okay, which tribe? But she was like, C. Starts with a C. Well, all the five assimilated tribes, all the five civilized tribes start with the letter C. You have Cherokee, Chickasha, Choctaw, um, oh my goodness, I'm forgetting them all because if it ain't Creek Muskogee, Muskogee Creek, and then uh, Seminole, and there's a, I feel like I'm forgetting one, <laughs> but we'll take the Seminole, four or five, they all pretty much start, we were like, okay, well, that, that didn't really tell us anything, so anyways, um, we come to find out that it's both uh, Muskogee Creek and Cherokee, and so we are tracing our lineage right now with Cherokee Nation through um, basically going through our great-grandmother, so our grandmother's mother. So come to find out, our grandmother's grandmother was Cherokee, whereas her parents, uh, her, my grandmother's father was Muskogee Creek, and my grandmother's mother was Muskogee Creek married, but come from a Cherokee woman. So registered, though, as um, Creek Muskogee. And so um, huge history. A lot of the tribes coming from the eastern seaboard, that whole area, um, coming into the interior of the United States as colonization was happening. A lot of people were being pushed, pushed, pushed. Um, our ancestors were the ones on the Trail of Tears. So a lot of these things we understand may be surprising for a lot to hear. But... Um, are you figuring it out, sister? Are you good? Look like your people's getting in here. Are they? I, I, I can't tell. You're tagged either way. I can't add this to my own Facebook. You got to go into the actual app and get the link and send it to people's messengers. <laughs> so, yeah, my sister, she she ain't feeling this. But we had to do it somehow because we couldn't really get on um, any other way. But um, maybe we'll do this video until she can figure it out. Um, but I, I, think, I think you're good. I think you're good the way you are. So I can't read. I can't read the comments. Oh, oh okay. You might need to just keep the the phone um, on with you. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's you, what I'm doing. Yeah, you might need to just keep it on. So I'm gonna let's see. I'm gonna. I'm just looking up something on the American Repository in Lenexa, Kansas, the Native American Report. You are just tuning in. Hi, Bree Morris. Oprah. Some of your people uh, may be coming in. We do have a Native Report. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay. All right. Great. So, um. All right, we can just go ahead and get started from there. We'll we'll get into it. So, sister, did you want to start? Uh, no. Where'd you want to start from? No. You want to be carrying this broadcast? Yes. <laughs> okay. So, where do you want to start? Okay, so basically, we have registered with uh, Cherokee Nation. We had a choice. If we wanted to go the Muskogee route or if we wanted to go the Indian route of the Cherokee Nation. So basically, it took a lot of research. Um, a lot of people are talking about reparations right now. So the best way to go about this is to essentially you have to do your genealogy. That's first and foremost. If you talk to anybody um, when it comes to reparations or even um, being American Indian, um, you're going to have to start with your birth certificate and any death records of any um, people that you're tracing through. So you're gonna have to go as far back as possible. So that's important because, for example, there was something called the Dawes Roll. 
Let's, let's see if I can pull up some information on that. So the Dolls Roll is basically, yeah. So the Dolls Roll from 1898 to 1914, basically, let's see if I can pull this up. Let me see if I can add it. Let's see. Mm, yeah, so you can see my sister there at the bottom hand. So this is the Dolls Roll. So the Dolls Roll is um, something that they made the Indians do on the Trail of Tears. So basically... So basically what happened was um, the Indians were coming to peace treaties. There was a lot of wars, so many Indian wars. So basically they made uh, the ancestors move from wherever they were. And they said that we have reserved land for you. That's where you get the reservation. We have reserved land from you. So for some Indians, they were already in Arkansas and those surrounding areas. And then they just kept pushing them further, further west. Because the United States was coming from the east. And anybody that was west of the 13 original colonies, they just kept pushing them, pushing them west to where our ancestors ended up um, leaving, like going into Louisiana, Mississippi, Arkansas, and then actually had to cross over the Mississippi River. Can you imagine having to cross a river in the wintertime and the Mississippi not being as manageable as it is today? So a lot of our ancestors ended up in Oklahoma. Now, what happened when they got there? When they got there, a lot of them ended up living in tents or just had to make home wherever they could. But they had to go. It's like the welfare office. Imagine that. It's like being at the DMV. You have to register. You have to provide this. You have to tell people who you are. So, again, you don't have ID cards. Some people, especially those um, newly emancipated from the proclamation, um, the Emancipation Proclamation, they had to prove who they were. So, basically, they asked them questions like, um, how long have you lived on the Indian reservation? And for a lot of our ancestors, they were like, all my life. So basically they cut it off at 1906. So for a lot of people, I always ask them, if you want to trace your Indian records, like we were saying with the, um, like we were saying with the dolls roll, um, I'll go back to it real quick. And you'll see my sister here and I on the bottom. You can use the Dolls Roll to trace your industry uh, to one of the five tribes, Cherokee, Chickasaw, Chautau, Muscogee Creek, and Seminole. So you would type their na name in. You would type their roll number in. So I'll show you real quick. I'll say Clara. I'll say Brown. I'll say roll number 476. Boom. Let's see. Oh, not that one. Lana, where'd you get the eCamp app from? What do you say? Where'd you get the eCamp app from? Oh, I pay for it. Yeah, where? Go her name. So, okay, oh, so I, the I website. Just, yeah, it's a it's a software program. So basically, uh, my, my bad, I misspelled her name first. So Claire Mae Brown, at the time she was a newborn, she was a Creek Freedman newborn, and then you'll get a search card, and then the search card may tell you more about her family and parents' names and things like this. So, boom, now I have that. So if you're, if you're, excuse me. If you're a deep researcher like I am, that's not just good enough. I wanted to know, oh, I'm like, okay, I got this information. I wanted to know so much more about this Clara Brown and how do I still have the name Brown today? But I wanted to learn everything I could about her. So what I did was basically um, I looked and used her role number to do a reverse search and I found her mother and I found her father. Even though I didn't need all that to register for the tribes, it actually helped me register with Cherokee as opposed to I didn't have to register for Muscogee Creek. So, great. Somebody said, my grandmother said that my people came from the Trail of Tears. I'll do my genealogy. So, you're going to hear a lot of that when you're doing your Native American stuff. A lot of people say, my grandmama said, because on this continent, we are a matriarch. We are a matrilineal. So, Oprah, I'll, I'll let you go, and I don't want to go too far away, but go ahead. I know, I, I, I'm just, I don't know, I'm just still irritated because I can't get my people in here. Do you want me to, what do you mean you can't? Because, of, like, my people are not here. So, go into your Facebook on your phone, click on the actual screen, and there's going to be a little share button there. Yeah, I know. And you share it, and then you send I it to Messenger. I share it, it's my thing. You share it, and then it's going to come, that's going to come up, and it's going to say Messenger. Yeah, but I got to send it to everybody in my Messenger. Just, yes, yes. You're tagged. Hmm? I don't like that. 
And they can watch it later or they can tune in now. But we have a good crowd here, so let's go. Let's work with what we have because we have people here now. So let's appreciate that. Anyway, so I just don't like that it's okay for black people to just walk around being accepted. Oh, we're black because somebody said put a label on us. So I'm like, fuck that. The reason why you ain't getting no reparations is because you can't identify with anything being known as black. That's not an identity. So if you want benefits, I'm more so, Lala's more about the history of Native American. I'm more so, what is, what's in it for me? Because they did take away from us. So we're trying to help y'all help y'all selves. It is a lot of benefits in it from home loans to education, to free healthcare, to monthly payments, stimulus checks, I mean, rental assistance, mortgage programs. It's, it's a lot of benefits to being Native American. And I'm not trying to say go uh, go falsify some paperwork like they did. This is our actual birthright. Because they did, the reason why they call us the five civilized tribes is because when the European invasion came, we were the tribes that were already established. We were already civilized tribes. Mm. So we are a part of the five civilized tribes. You may not be a part of the five civilized tribes, but a lot of these tribes that are not, they go under the tribes that are. Right, Lala? Yeah, so a lot of people, ancestors said no. I know people like to think black people didn't have a choice in their own life, so-called black people. But a lot of people said no, we don't want to go uh, to Oklahoma. A lot of people in Georgia did the same thing. The ones that uh, left, they ended up in Oklahoma or maybe stopped along the way in Mississippi, what we today call Alabama areas. Some people kept going. It some, took some people months to walk. It took some people years to finally get it to Oklahoma. That's why the dogs rolled. The up. caption is not doing my words correctly. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you need to articulate. You need to articulate. That's how I talk. So, yeah. What I'm going to say is, Lala, that link I sent you, I'm going to send it to you again so you can go look at it on your screen. But the one I sent you that was like, it was an interactive map. Mm -hmm. Um, that map is actually really good because it helps people start off on knowing what tribe they actually are. If you know where your family's from, you can kind of zoom in on that land and then it'll tell you what tribe was there back when or whatever. Uh, I'm, not seeing the link. I'm about to resend the link to you. Yeah, so basically, like we said, they, so by 1906, they cut off the Dawes Rolls. If your ancestors weren't in Oklahoma by that time or had newborns around at that time, they cut off the registration. So, um, and then they... That that was a mess. So anyway, yeah. Like click on that click click on that link I, I got just sent you. Okay, got you. Now do your green screen. I will. Look, I'm gonna do your green screen. That's that we know what it's called. <laughs> yeah, we'll get to it. So um so let's let's put it up. I'm trying to make sure I get the interactive map. Go to map. I'm gonna go. Yeah, to yeah, it's, it's already um, yeah, it's gonna already take to the map. And these are not as accurate, but it's still fun. So if you can know a little bit more about the tribes and area, but I, I'll, yeah, I'll but no, but no, click on it. Like, I mean, share, share your screen. I'm gonna show you. Uh, yeah, well, hold um, on. I gotta click. Oh, here it is. Wait, I gotta zoom in. <laughs> no, no, you ain't gotta zoom in. I'm gonna show you how to do it. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, you do it. You do need to zoom in. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Look, they look, they try to put us in Africa. <laughs> yeah, uh, go to America. Mine didn't do all that. Yeah, Maybe you was doing it on your mobile device. So. Yep, exactly. Maybe because you're on your laptop. So click on, yeah, just keep zooming in to get to America, United States. Yeah. So, yeah, they, they are. So this is pretty good. This is a decent map, but for a lot of people. Yeah, but when you, gotta, when you zoom in more, you'll be able to see more because people, right now they have like the major trials, but they don't, when you zoom in, you see those smaller trials. Mm hmm. Yeah. You gotta zoom in more. And then you gotta go to territories. Could, uh, you, yeah, I got you. I'm I'm doing it. I'm working on it. I'm working. I'm getting there. It, it it seems like it doesn't want us. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try this. So we're gonna do one for example. Let's see if we can do Cherokee. We'll do Cherokee. See now Cherokee is two. Is the Eastern Band. Those were the ones that stayed. A lot of them in for Cherokee. We're gonna go to Cherokee, Oklahoma. <laughs> yeah. So, as you can see, this is an area where a lot of the tribes, you got the Cotto, mm -hmm. Cherokee, you got Muscogee here. Now, around this area of Muscogee, Cherokee, all this, that's giving you the areas of Tulsa. Yeah. Click on the word treaties. Ooh, interesting. 
No, no, click on the word. Nope, at the top. Oh, okay. Cut on, cut on the treaties. Okay. Yeah, cut on treaties, and then you can see the treaties that were made, and you can also research that. Wow. That's how, that's how that's how you're able to find out what what treaty exactly was made. So when you do get your benefits, you can know what is actually owed to me. Amazing. That's really good. Well, what was taken and what was owed. Yeah, a lot because, of people skip over the treaties part. Yeah. So, if you want to put that in the chat as well, great. Oh, great, yeah, let me great. put that link in the chat. Yeah, you put it in. Yeah, so, that many people can have it, yeah. I'm looking at all the different areas. I'm looking at, I'm going to Muskogee. Oh, okay, I can do it that way. Okay. Look at all these tribes. And then look at it says session. Session, like in session, like they seeded their lands. Cotto. Yeah, it's very important. So you're going to trace, keep tracing, keep tracing. Wow. I'm looking at this. That's so interesting. I'm going to turn the treaties off, I think. So anyway, that's very interesting. Very, very. The Osage. Kickapoo. The Cotto. Cherokee. You can learn a lot more. And every tribe has a... And every tribe has an interesting story for how they ended up in Oklahoma. Again, the areas of Tulsa, uh, Oklahoma, of Black Wall Street. So that's just kind of where we are um, in the process. And so we share a lot of information. And so a lot of times we do get a lot of uh, pushback. But for also, for the most part, a lot of people are talking to their ancestors. They're talking to their grandparents. They're asking their elders that are still here. Um, may be elderly, but they're asking about what do you know about us being Indian? And a lot of people are finding out a lot more, coming out to be pleasantly surprised. And so, but that doesn't come without cognitive dissonance. A lot of people are upset because they have wrapped up their identity in Pan Africanism, unfortunately. So that's just where we are. Hey, Davida, how are you? Yeah, like none of my people are in here. Great. Like, Maybe your no, people are not interested in this information because no, they were. They was all in the room at first. None of my people were in here. Like, okay. It's like, so it's we have any questions? Okay. Yeah. We haven't shared the link yet, so. I hate Facebook. So we'll. Sh yeah. I'll share the link. <laughs> That's your background, Lala. <laughs> Downtown LA, Lala. Lila. Lila. You can't hear me. You don't hear me? Yeah, I was. Uh, yeah. Is that, is that, is that downtown LA? Background? Yeah, you know, it's always music. something. It's always something <laughs> going on downtown. So I, I did share the link in the chat. So um, you're not going to be do, able to do anything in terms of tracing. Like a lot of people, are like, oh, I heard this and that, and that's great. Um, but for the most part, you want to uh, associate with the tribes, you want to get involved socially, no one's stopping you. But what we're talking about is tribal registration. We're talking about benefits. We're talking about all of the assistance that comes with that. And um, from a business perspective as well, it might be a good idea to claim as many benefits and rights and protection that you can. You can get a lot of grants and loans. Um, and you can get some diversity and inclusion contracts based on the fact and how your business is, is registered. So there's a lot of funding right now. There's increased spending to certain uh, companies, certain type of businesses, certain types of organizations um, with this protected class and minority status. Um, because we're not to be a majority. It's not for the Native Americans, the American Indians, to be a majority. That's not our lot. Like, we're not... The United States is a corporation. Hey, the oh. Yeah, hey. Welcome. The United <laughs> States is a corporation for um, for immigrants to come here, <laughs> basically. So we are not immigrants. We are not migrants. So you're not going to benefit. But at the same time, the tribal groups, uh, the tribal nations have the right to sovereignty, meaning they have the right to self-govern. So a lot of the jurisdiction of many cities and states, they don't have uh, jurisdiction on Indian reservations. Um, right. A lot of times when it comes to the reservations. Even the police force, like once, once you're native and sovereign, the, only, the, the, the level of police 
that can police you is federal level. Yeah. And most you times feds is not getting involved with a lot. Yeah, they're not getting involved. Yeah. yeah. Unless it's some huge capital crime. You're not going to see them getting involved too much. So, um, so with that, the Supreme Court ruled in 2020 that uh, had to affirm that the Muscogee Nation never disbanded. They never disorganized. They are still um, well and alive, very much organized, um, and recognizing their tribal sovereignty. They affirmed that uh, Tulsa is indeed Muscogee Creek territory. That's important because, as we know about Black Wall Street, that's how these people were able to build these Black Wall Streets. It was land allotments. It was some type of um, reparations. And so whether your family has sold the house 100 years later um, or sold their land, there's so many other tricks based on states, so we don't have to get into that. But, sister, did you want to say anything else? About yeah, I want to talk about the... Um the program, like the uh, HUD program, I'm all about whole ownership and all that, da 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 So this is like my goal, like my personal goal. The um, HUD.gov has section 184, and it says the section is uh, 184 Indian Home Loan Guarantee Program is a home mortgage product specifically designed for American Indian and Alaskan Native families, Alaskan villages, villages tribes, or tribally designed housing entities. Um, it's, it was established in 1992 to facilitate home ownership and to increase uh, access in the Native American communities. So this program, basically it works, is um, the Office of Loan Guarantee within a HUD of Na Native American programs guarantees the Section 184 home mortgage loans made to Native American borrowers. The loan guarantees assures the lender that its investment will be repaid in full in the event of foreclosure. Um, so the borrower applies for the Section 184 loan with the participating lender and works with the tribe and Bureau of Indian Affairs, if uh, at least in the tribal land. The lender then elevates the necessary loan documentation and submits the loan approval to HUD's loan uh, office or whatever. Um, they give you, uh, they give it to American Indians who are members of federally recognized tribes and uh, Indian housing authorities. So. This is a map. I don't have that fancy shit like that. So this is a map. That's good. How you do the camera? Where's my camera? Yeah, there right. Goes. This is a map. And uh, partial approval is in the red areas. Full approval is in the yellow areas. And, and eligibility is in the white areas. So for the most part, most of the East Coast is white. But the West Coast is definitely fully approved areas. I don't know how to do it. That's so confusing. <laughs> um, they give you about $20,000 for your down payment for your home, along with your tribe give you about $25,000 in addition for uh, approval or loan payments. Also, if you're doing rental programs, you're Native American, uh, like my brother has, Choctaw Nation, our brother downstairs, he gets first last month's rent plus security deposit. Um, if, if he is facing eviction, they will pay off the eviction. So you never like getting evicted or on the street or anything like that. They also give you money for clothes, food, uh, like shelter. I mean, if you go to college, it's always a misconception that, oh, Indians go to school for free. No, not quite. You go to school for free if you're going to a university on the reservation. That's what I learned. It has to be so university. university of Oklahoma at Tulsa, that is a reservation. Uh, yeah. So that means that Oklahoma, Oklahoma is an Indian territory. Right. So people think that the reservation is all this little bitty, oh, it's just like this little bitty area. No, it, it, it is so, so, Tulsa, Oklahoma, along with place, other places, is Native American territory. East Oklahoma is Native American. I got a map downstairs. I should have brought it upstairs. But Reggie gave me a map like that shows like Oklahoma, how it is. And, and Oklahoma is not the only place. Cher uh, Cherokee Nation also seeps out into Kentucky and also Alabama. Yeah, Alabama I can always pull it up if you have. Like, one, is it Arkansas or Alabama? One of those places. Hicktown, very Hick mm -hmm. Hicktown, Sticktown. But that's the Cherokee Nation. Not a lot. We're not talking about the Seminoles and Choctaw, Chickasha, and uh, Muscogee Creek. We ain't even talking about those. We just talking about Cherokee because that's what we have researched. But you can go look into your actual tribe but that's why i gave you guys that map 
So you can go zoom in and see what tribe you're a part of or where your family comes from. Your family come from Florida, more likely maybe Seminole. If you have come from Louisiana, it could be Muscogee. It could also be Blackfoot, Cachata. If it's not federally, re federally recognized tribe, part of the five civilized tribes, see what tribe you're under. See what branch your tribe is under. You know what I'm saying? Right, Lala? Absolutely, absolutely. So that's why we're telling a lot of people constantly. Um, we're constantly telling people, check out where your ancestors were. And so some of your ancestors may have gone to Oklahoma, registered, and maybe lived in another uh, area. I've seen some people go back and forth between Virginia and Oklahoma. It just depends on what was happening at the time. So I'm going to go over to the map real quick. So yes. we're talking about Indian territories before it was called Oklahoma. It was called Indian Territory. And again, this is 1889. This is around the time they started initiating. So before the Dolls Rolls, there was a other so many other roles that our people constantly had to get on these roles to prove who they are, prove who they are. At the same time, the United States is moving them back. A lot of the Asiatic that you see, they were coming down from the parts of uh, all those areas of Canada. I call them the uh, I call them the Kodak Eskimos. They were coming down. They were coming down from and so the Osage, for example, coming from um, parts that were assigned to them in Missouri. Again, Cherokee Nation, Creek. See how close they are. Yeah. So you got people here that live there. You got people that are there. Of course, there's going to be along these lines. There's going to be assimilation. Uh, a lot of Chickasaw and Choctaw are related. A lot of them uh, got a lot of treaties together. Uh, Cheyenne, Arapaio Nation. You'll even see Arapaio going out to Arizona. So look at all these different areas where they were forcing people into this area. Some people were like, man, forget this. Some people were really like, I'm out. Look, unassigned lands, open by the first land run, all this. No man's land, attached to the Twin Terry V. Organic Act. So grazing lands, later known as big pasture, because you have to have your game. It, it, it's really a clusterfuck. It really is still not enough. So imagine trying to make all black people fit into one state. Imagine having all the black people in the United States in part of, we won't mess with you anymore, but we know that wasn't true because they still burned down Tulsa after the surplus they had. They gave right. a lot of land to people that weren't so-called Native Americans. So after we settled in all parts of uh, Oklahoma from Chickasha over there to Boynton to Wagner to uh, Langston, all those areas, we looked up and we're like, oh, wow. In the early 1900s, like, we have a surplus. We have more than enough. Well, there's a, another group of people who are being disenfranchised, and they don't have much. So maybe if, we, if they help us continue to build upon the land, they can live here and be residents, which still today anybody can live on the reservations. So that area ended up becoming Tulsa. They build universities. And so everything is not a horror story. Um, I know there was a, a race massacre and uh, I recognized that last year, went to Tulsa for the 100th uh, commemoration of it. But for the most part, when you get there, you come to find out that our people have farms, cowboys, settler ranches, all these things. When you talk about settlers, you talk about com people coming in. But a lot of those cowboy ranches, you talk about uh, stories. Um, well, everybody just saw the harder they fall. And all everybody in that was American Indian. And so you always hear the story of cowboys versus Indians. Well, they're the same people. Indian, American Indian is a nationality. Cowboys is a profession or a job or a lifestyle. So as you saw in the movie from Terry Key Bill, from Bill Pickett to um, Rufus Buck, who was Creek Nation, Bass Reeves, just to name a few. So if anybody has any questions, yes. <laughs> oh, she <you> said, <laughs> thank you, thank you. May, welcome, welcome. So I know it's a, um, it's a lot of information, but... You see my sister putting information out, and I know some people watch the broadcast later. And so it's not that anybody hates being black or we're ashamed of Africa. It's just that as we dig into who we are and we're finding our answers, yeah. we're not finding any connection to Africa. You yeah, want to because why, why is it okay for us to just walk around? Somebody say, oh, you African-American. And we're like, okay, that's fine. We'll be African-Americans. We come from Africa. But then when people say, oh, well, no, you're actually Native American. And it's like, oh, no, I don't know about that. Because it's like, if, even if you was coming from Africa, yo, we have been born in America, more like more of our family members, our direct ancestors have been born in America more than anything. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So even if you, they trying to say, go back to slavery, you don't fucking go and go that was. You know what I'm saying? 
you, you, like more than likely your great 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 grandpa was born in America. You know what I'm saying? So the African shit been deployed, but it, it, when we use that it, because we are so lazy, we're too lazy to actually go out and seek the history. Even when Asians or Mexicans people, when they're born here, they might still call them the Mexicans. They're considered Americans um, or American Chinese actor. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it's like, wh why is it that everything that we, we have to be labeled African-American and then they put us in this one big ass fucking box knowing damn well we are a lot of things. You know what I'm saying? We are a lot of things. Like we're not just even African American. Like who, who, who the fuck is? Oh, so I'm African and I'm American. Yeah. Like, and, and, and both your parents are American. Your grandparents are American. Yeah, your, your grandparents, your grandparents, grandparents. Was born here. Your grandparents was born here. Shit, my grandparents were born here. My parents were born here. That automatically made me American. That didn't mm -hmm. even fucking make the African shit been far removed. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah, some people's parents are, like, I consider people who come from Africa to birth their children here. Yes, but they're going to, so are they African American? Why are I still calling them Africans? You see what I'm saying? Like, people like, are some of our friends who are Nigerian that were born here. Mm -hmm. Why you ain't calling them African American? Well, they, they are now because they want to go to HBCUs for free. You know, they yeah, want welfare what I'm benefits. Is, what I'm saying is, they when you see now. that person, when, when you see that person, you will identify him as, oh, he's a Nigerian because his parents are Nigerian, but mm -hmm. he was born here. So why isn't he considered African American? Mm -hmm. Like our friend RJ. RJ is Nigerian Liberian. Why, is it not, why, why do we always acknowledge uh, RJ is Liberian and not Nigerian is, but we don't ever say he's African American. He was born. I don't know if he was born here or not. I think he was born, born in this country. country, yeah. Connecticut, right? Yeah, so he was born here, so oh, why not label him African-American when he really is African-American? Mm -hmm. His parents really mm -hmm. are African. He was born an American. He really is. So why are we considered the same thing? We not. If, if, that, if that's the case, then we, even when we try to first search for our African roots, people always be like, well, I don't know. You, everybody want to be from Sierra Leone. Everybody want to be Ethiopian. Everybody want to be this. Everybody want to be that. It's like, no. Maybe some niggas really might be gone from Ghana. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like even, we get we get slapped for, for looking up that shit. We get talked shit to when we want to look up the, the African the American shit. Mm -hmm. Either way, it's like everybody is so happy and complacent with black people just not knowing no self identity. And, and that's okay. Oh, you, you ain't got no self identity. Welcome to the club. But oh, you want to see us as self identity? Oh, girl, you just want to make that up. You just want to be that, or you just want to be this. You, it's like get the fuck out of here. People really don't know who the fuck they are. People want to know where they come from. Like, what, why are we knocking people for wanting to know? So when I tell people, uh, like this one guy at the block, because he was like, oh, y'all ain't no Indians. Y'all pretendians is what he said. Pretendians. <laughs> yes, it is. But as he goes off and can't explain his connect, direct connection to commit. Oh, you, you, oh, you commit, nigga? Well show, well, show me paperwork. Shit, we, we we ourselves, you just opened up the chat. You just showed how we can trace back to our Native American roots. Shit, mm -hmm. our great great grandma had a fucking affidavit. Her birth affidavit is from Cherokee Nation. Right. So y'all yeah. niggas want to be African so fucking bad. Y'all want to be slaves so fucking bad. Y'all just dying and desperate to be slaves. Y'all dying and desperate to be nobodies and without identity y'all are dying and desperate to be considered black and want to beg for reparations in the same breath and this is why you ain't getting no reparations because black is not a fucking identity right oh that's a whole other thing somebody said can our last name have been given actually people came to this country with no id and took our last names so our story on this continent goes back to where we're from nineteen thousand years ago in missouri there were people in areas of Kansas, Missouri, 12,000 to 19,000 years ago. That's before the Asiatic crossed the Bering Strait that has been debunked. The Bering Strait theory has been debunked. So uh, America wasn't empty, then all of a sudden Asians came over and filled it. Yeah. <laughs> that, that didn't happen. There were already people in the interior, not on the seaboards, or coming to America, were already here. So... A lot of the 13 original colonies, if you come and do your history, there's a book called The Negro Question, Part 6. It talks about how the 13 original colonies were chartered by Blackamore kings, which evident is starting to point to be a little different to say those Blackamore kings were actually American Indians going to Europe. That's why I keep telling people the Blackamores in Europe that ruled were not African. They are not African. When you hear about Europeans doing all these things to African nations, those were Moors. So 
you know, a lot more evidence is coming out. When you go to your history books and it says Moor or Negro, come to find out a lot of those things are American Indians. So this is, uh, I'll, I'll share some more information about the Negro question part six. But for the most part, um, the 13 original colonies um, were all f chartered in terms of uh, amalgamating and things like that with the um, the Blackamoor kings who at the time were being dispelled. So that's why a lot of people are like, oh, we Shebrew Israelites. A lot of people say, well, we're this and we're that. Because they always see it as whoever comes to America, they just, 19,000 years of American indigenous history is out the window for that one African you might find. So you're going to learn something about this continent that um, you're going to learn actually that we're matrilineal. So the mothers, the vaginas, the wombs matter. So let me see if I can get to this book. Um, I'm just going to, you know, just here. You got anything else, sister? No, no, no. All right, I just want to share it. Okay. So the Negro question part six, the 13 black colonies. All right. So I'll just read it. And I'll just, maybe I'll just take the, um, the little book here and I'll put it in between us. Um, I've read this book and I actually have seven, but I can't get into seven w before I can. I need to tell y'all about six first. Way too many people don't know about six. Let's see. I'm going to shrink it down a little bit. Like Bree Morrison, Bree, Mor Bree Morrison. Yeah, right. Why aren't white people called European American? Exactly. So what are they called? People just call them. So why are you okay with being called white? And then they turn around. They, they okay with being called white, right? They don't care about being called white. As long as we don't, as long as we don't get to get called. No well, else. well, in a color coded system, black means to lack. White is light. White is right. Sorry. So that's the thing. But you ain't black. Literally, like this color is black. And do you see the difference in my skin color to this? Right. We got yeah. two different colors here. But we get let too many people like J-Lo, Big Pun, and all them, Selena's, we let them get away with calling themselves brown when we are indeed the ones that are brown. But I want to bring up the Negro Question Part 6. I just wanted to read this book real quick for y'all, just synopsis, and then we can move on. If anybody has any questions about the 13 original colonies. The research in this book will prove that the 13 British colonies were founded by four black Scottish kings, King James the Sixth of Scotland, King Charles the First, King Charles the Second, King James the Second, Duke of York, and King George the Second of England. So this book, The Negro Question Part Six by Lee Cummins, features a testimony of former Secret Service agent John Mackey of England, in which he gives the, the black descriptions of all the princes, the nobles, the dukes, and the king of England. This book also features a ship's manifest. Those all people are like, where's the ships? What about the ships? It tells you all the people that were on the ships. You cannot get 300 people on the ship. You'd be happy, lucky if you can get 20 people on a ship. So all this bringing people on, doing the middle passage for months, just all these people cramped up with no water. You cannot go um, but a few days without food and water. You're not going months and days and weeks without it. So anyway, this book also features a ship manifest that describes the Jacobites, which is the Moors, some of the people call the Israelites, while they are boarding the convict ships. What actually happened is that people were being expelled. The kings were being disposed. You just think white people been in power all this time? No, right. they were actually dethroning and beheading. And I know a lot of y'all like to watch Game of Thrones, but that ain't it. 10,000 10, years before even there was a Game of Thrones, HBO was going to come out with a prequel, and it was going to be an all-black cast. But then they, they just canceled the project. But anyway, these are not only the documents that validate the claims of this book, but they also have the writings of Thomas Jefferson, Professor Boyd Dawkins, and so many of y'all need confirmation from white people. Huh. Benjamin Franklin and so much more. So I wanted to bring this up. Benjamin Franklin said, uh, and I want to quote this, it's from the uh, Observations of Mankind, and I think I'll pull that up too because that's important. Let's see. The Observations of Mankind, 1751. And I want y'all to know that what... Since a lot of y'all just need white people to confirm it, uh, who we is. And I put this meme out. I try to, like, make things go viral. And so this is one of so-called founding fathers. And um, I'll, let me get out of this. So I'm just eat my little fruit, my little vegetable tray. Yeah, man. eat your fruits and vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> Look, okay, we're going to get into it. All right. 
Listening to Lala. Yeah, just keep listening. It's what you do in real life. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. I wanted to read the 24th. It's a uh. All right, we're gonna we're gonna zoom in so so y'all can see it. Okay, and that's all your work cited right there. Want to make sure y'all can see it, good and clear. Maybe that's too close, <laughs> too close, a little too close. All right, it leads me to one remark. This is Thomas Jefferson that the number of purely white people in the world is proportionately very small. All of Bra Africa is black or tawny. Asia is chiefly tawny. America, exclusive of the newcomers, wholly so. And in Europe, the Spaniards, Italians, French, Russians, and Swedes are generally of what we call a swarthy complexion, as are the Germans also, the Saxons only accepted with who the English make the principal body of white people on the face of the earth. I wish their numbers were increased. And while we are, as I might call it, scouring our planet, because remember they're explorers and whatever, by clearing America of woods, meaning chopping down all the forests, and so making this side of our globe reflect a brighter light to the eyes of inhabitants in Mars and Venus, why should we in the sight of superior beings darken its people? Why increase the sons of Africa by planting them in America, where we have so fair an opportunity by excluding all blacks and tawnies of increasing the lovely white and red? But perhaps I am partial to the complexion of my country, for such kind of partiality is natural to mankind. Now, this man, if, if white people wanted to be the majority, why would they go out... <laughs> Why would they go out and bring in more people from Africa? Does that make sense to anybody? Right. Does that make sense to anybody? Like No. <laughs> it don't. <laughs> so why would anybody go and say, okay, we want less of these people, but keep bringing them in, and they're going to have babies too, and we're going to subjugate all of them, and we're already outnumbered. He already said we're out, they're outnumbered. So who does that? <laughs> it, 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 don't, it don't make no sense. It don't make no sense. So it's like, it's, 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 let me go get some more folks to come on over here. Let me go do it all the way from Africa. Let me, let me leave Europe, stop by Africa to bring them to America so they can help these niggas that's already here. <laughs> it don't make no sense. Yeah, you have to understand. Well, it was, kill them off and then bring some new people in. And you have to understand these people um, didn't have a lot of resources. They didn't even have money to pay um, in 1776, when the United States was formed, that's when slavery was introduced. July 4th, 1776 is when slavery began officially in the United States. Um, there may have been some black market practices, some illegal things going on. And then those motherfuckers insurrected against the British monarchy, which slavery was prohibited in the 13 original colonies as consistent with the Court of England, which is using the Magna Carta of 1215 as their moral compass, as their constitution. The Magna Carta, since 1215, this is the time the Moors ruled Europe, right? Well, in medieval times, the Magna Carta prohibited any of the king's subjects from owning. So how are you a subject of the king and then you got slaves? When everybody's supposed to be working for the benefit of the kingdom, you can't go out and have slaves. So when those people resurrected against the British monarchy, what they did was um, then they instituted slavery. And so all those wealthy blacks that were already in the Americas, already settled in 13 original colonies who had businesses, who had white people paying them rent. Yes, you heard that right. And I'll bring it up. In 1700s, there were white people paying black people to live on their land. And then all yeah. of a sudden, the United States changed the law, confiscated their land, and then made the tenant the landowner. Made the plantation owner the owned, okay? That's, and that's what I'm trying to tell people. Quit thinking that white people just came here, the European people just came here, and everybody was living in fucking teepees. No, <laughs> there were civilizations, thriving civilizations, because the Moors were already trading with them. There was a lot of trading going on before European people even knew what white people was. People was existing. Them niggas didn't come here and live in no damn teepees. Europeans didn't come here and invade no damn teepees. They invaded people's homes, businesses, <laughs> buildings, you know, uh, hospitals, and you know. Although it, it was not just everybody think that it, it, y'all was too much Pocahontas. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah, I think mm -hmm. everybody was running around with half half outfits on with fucking like no. 
That is not what was going on. If, if it was going on, they wouldn't want to invade this land. If they was living in the shit lands of Europe, this fucking wastelands over there, why would they come over here and be like, huh, we can really do something with this land? It was already done. That's why they was attracted to it. And they were not going to go get no fucking Africa, Africans from Africa to come over here and do it. How the fuck you going to ask them to do it according to y'all? According to y'all, Africans live in huts. And they, and they shit is a wasteland. So why would I ask somebody who lives in a wasteland to come build me up a civilization? No, you use the people that was already here who already had nice advanced technology and establishments to, re to make more for you because you liked what you saw. So you don't see, our shit don't even look like the shit that's over there. If, 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 if they was building the same type of infrastructures, the shit will look similar. It doesn't even look similar to the shit that's over there, over here in America. Mm -hmm. Right, Lila? I agree, I agree, I agree. Um, so like, pe no, people make it, it comes to this shit. you know people make it seem like our ancestors were primal as if we don't know how to construct um as if benjamin banneker had no education but could design what we today know as washington dc um i do want to share this real quick this is from the commodore collection this is i'm going to preface it by saying this first we always talk here we talk a lot about genie. We talk a lot about genealogy here, and I'm gonna bring this up now. Somebody wanted to sell their home. Their home was over 200 years old. They lived in Chesapeake Bay, Maryland, and as they were cleaning out this old home, they went into the attic. Then they found hundreds of letters, of records, uh, accounting, just bills, of whatever, it's whatever they found. It's just it is what it is. I'm gonna show you a little bit of it. They have so much stories to tell. These stories will never, I mean, from black entrepreneurs, landowners, people that claim they've been stolen and kidnapped and trying to figure out. So whenever you see somebody kidnapped from, um, you know, whatever, they will call them like, Ooh, we got them from the Congo or we got them from Africa. You have to be very, very clear. There were no trade routes between West Africa and the 13 original colonies. See, that's what y'all don't want to, nobody wants to admit that. So you have to have import and exports. There was no trading between the 13 original colonies. I wanted to go back to this real quick. This is the Commodore collection. Somebody found hundreds of letters in their attic when they were ready to sell their home, their family home, and they found all these black businesses, um, mm -hmm. even this. For example, I'll, I'll click on one. And these are just some they're put on the internet, but the rest are in the museum. An African in America, as you can see. I'll read it for you. We can read it together. Um, it's a piece of small paper, a window to the life of a man who was born in Africa, so-called, enslaved in Mar Maryland. I don't know how that happened because I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. Who? Who the fuck? Who the fuck? I don't even want to get into that. But anyway, he gained his freedom somehow. Somehow somebody who brought him all the way from the Congo to set a free nigga out, okay? Exactly. That's what I'm saying. I brought him all the way from Africa just so I could set him free no, and help others like become free. That's Lala, what they didn't want. Lala, they act like these niggas is catching a spirit flight to Africa and, and on a round trip ticket and bringing them niggas right back. According to slavery, that's what the fuck is, is going on. <laughs> niggas is catching fucking frontier in spirit, hauling a bunch of, paying for tickets, getting a bunch of motherfucking Africans over there and coming the fuck back. <laughs> where where are these ships? When were they built? Where were they built? Where are they perished at? Where where are they? So was he kidnapped by himself? Was it just him? Did he just come, did he, you did know what? These here? Africans gonna stop lying. Was I'm he just... already over here uh, um, trading with the Americans? Like what? And how do you know he was born in, in Africa? In the Congo. You know that nigga's name. Yeah, and this is what it, he was born. This is what it, I, I think they have it transcribed. This shit, this Commodore. I'm gonna share the link for the Commodore collection. Yeah. They better leave me alone. Look, I'm going to share it. Look, okay, when I get it back. So, look. So, this. So, <laughs> so this nigga comes over from Congo to Maryland, right? And then somehow gains his freedom and then helps other people become free. So, was he just kidnapped in Africa? Was he somebody that was working for white people and all of a sudden he was indebted? See, I think he got it real fucked up. Well, go ahead. I, I gained his freedom. I'm, no. Let's see. They never, no, they never say that. Oh, he just gained his freedom. He no, he 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 bought. What sometimes people bought their freedom, oh, because they Mama, didn't pay slaves, but Mama, they how? bought their freedom. How? Let's get into. I'm a slave, 
If I'm a slave not getting paid, how the fuck am I making money to buy my freedom? That's the part they don't want to talk about. Those people were actually exactly. getting paid. No, some of these niggas was not slaves. Some of these niggas was already free. And it's must they was tell they was freeing other people by freeing their fucking minds by saying, hey, nigga, this really your mama in them land. All right, I'm gonna I read the transcript then. <laughs> so look. Okay. So the 1800 document records a free person of color, Congo Mango is what they called him. It's some it's just some African shit to make him seem exotic. Like, ooh, this this slave is better because we got this one from Africa. It's like, ooh. <laughs> Later known as the Congo Mander. Not her, slave. Uh. Oprah, listen to this. Purchasing an enslaved man named Kato Dawes. Dawes wrote, Kato Dawes, in order to grant Dawes his freedom, such generous acts were not uncommon in the early African-American community with those who were already free, saving up hard money to purchase others' freedoms from white slaveholders. That's very important. Both Mander and Dawes lived near what is now Galena in Kent County, where Dawes was enslaved by James Woodland. By signing this document, Mander pledged a bond of 100 pounds. That's a lot of money. A very large sum that Dawes would cause no trouble or expense to Woodland during his new life as a free man. And you can read a little bit of the letter there. Let me see. Oh, here's the document transcript right here. I, Congo Mango, have on this 31st day of July in the year 1800 purchased from James Woodland, a Negro man named Cato Dawes. And I, the said Congo Mango for myself, my heirs, executors, and administrators do bind myself and every one of them in the penal sum. That means a penalty. A penalty fee. He had to pay a penalty fee. Sum of 100 pounds current money to keep and save harmless the said James Woodland and his heirs from any trouble. So not only did this person buy the freedom, but they had to promise that they wouldn't come back and retaliate against your monkey has. <laughs> what the fuck is that about? And that's why a lot of our people won't fight. A lot of people won't fight. That was part of the promise, but I don't even, this shit's sick. This shit's sick. And uh, on account to the said Cato for here thereafter, witness my hand and seal on the day and year after said. His Congo X, meaning an Indian. When you see that X, that means I was coerced into signing this. I didn't want to sign it. That's why we put the X. That's an Indian secret. Congo X Mango Seal, boom. Mark, witness to um, Joe Briscoe. Oof, that one's deep. That one's deep. So many other letters. I'm going to make sure that I, I share this link in the chat. Um, another one of my favorite ones is the um, Black Entrepreneurs. How he was a black entrepreneur in, let's see, here's another one, 1815. <laughs> in 1815. This is crazy. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to, like, do all this stuff. So I'm trying to, like, I got a lot going on. It, it is not easy to run this broadcast, I'll tell you that. But I thank you for your patience today. Anybody have any questions? Please you answer RJ's text message. <laughs> oh, you can see it. <laughs> yes, we see it. Oh shit, y'all done got everything. <laughs> Did you see everything or just you saw all my text messages? Girl, we just saw the like the opening. Oh, okay. My man, we back. And we're back. Uh <laughs> oh, I'm gonna have to cut that shit off. I'm gonna have to edit that. I'm gonna have to edit that. Thank you for letting me. <laughs> All right, shit. I'm trying to. I'm trying to um, share this information. Oh shit. I want to make sure nobody's information gets out. I'm gonna copy the link. All right. That's our line. We, got, we, got, we, got, we need to get these terrorists out of our damn comment section. We got terrorism coming through. Oh, I didn't see that shit. That was a historian right now. Oh gosh. All right. All right, we're going to keep the conversation going. I wanted to keep the conversation going because I wanted to read this part about black entrepreneurs. And, like, I put the link in the chat so you all can... So you all can read it on your own time. But I'm going to go back to this one as well. This one is titled Black Entrepreneurs, if you can see at the top there. This, again, coming out of Maryland. All right, Queen Anne County. This is a contract between Solomon Wilson... And William Skinner, November 17, 1815, detail. All right, great. So Solomon was a, fricks, a free mixed race in Queen Anne's County. I want to I preface this. 
uh, when you say mix, what you had was Europeans coming over, mixing with the Native Americans. They don't tell you that both of these sides were so-called black. There, you had the Blackamoor European Jacobites that were being expelled, and then you had the Native Americans who were already here. These people look alike. They have some things in common. They have friendly relationships. When you hear about how the natives and the European settlers were so friendly, that's why and that's how, because they essentially look and appear to be the same. But I want to go back to this real quick. It says, Solomon Wilson was a free mixed race man in Queen Anne's County who gained economic success against all the odds. County records show that he purchased a 50-acre farm in 1802 at a time when few people of color amassed such substantial property. He even had white tenants who paid him rent. Are y'all hearing this? In 1802, he had white tenants who paid him rent. But for many free African Americans, Wilson's prosperity moved tenuous. By 1815, the date of this manuscript from the Commodore collection, the farm had been seized to pay debts. The document is a contract between Wilson and William Skinner, a white man who was living in a house owned by Wilson. Wilson agrees to sell Skinner all of the household items at the property, probably to satisfy the same creditors who had caused him to lose his 50 acre farm. So I just, I don't want to go too far more into that, but what do you think about that, just hearing that? So basically, like I said, if slavery didn't start until 1776, all of a sudden people are looking up and the laws are changing before their very eyes. Overnight, the law is saying, you black. I'm what? And you can't own land. Mm -hmm. And you can't have white people work for you. You got to work for white people, the laws. And people are like, what? So a lot of people... A black man can't sue a white man in court and win and shit like that. And yeah, a, a black man must always lose. And you any. have no rights. You have you have been blacked out. You have been blacked out. So why anybody wants to talk about who black and who ain't? Should nobody want to be black? And somebody made a post the other day said black comes in all shades. No, the fuck you don't. Black just come in black. Nigga, anything else how's that is gray. Now, mel you could say melanin. But to be like black, like we, we just love that fucking word and we gotta let that shit go. We need to remove the word black, calling ourselves black. If you ain't wearing the color black, I I'm not fucking black. Mm. You're not fucking black. Black means you have no standing in law and court. That's why you'll always exactly. lose. You, you say, oh, y'all did this to me because I'm black. It sounds well, different yeah. when you say, but no, oh. like, but no, no, you really, yeah, because you're black. Yeah, you, 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 black means they can kill you with impunity. Black means that you uh, have no rights and you don't exist and you're disenfranchised. Yeah. It does not he like, means a color, but it's really a, the status. Yeah, you, you have, have no status. He says stateless. That's a good word for yeah. it. Yeah. So I'm going to read this document again. Look, it says, um, in the records of Queen Anne's County, among other things, it is contained to falling to wit. Queen Anne's County to wit, be it remembered that on the 17th day of November in the year 1815, the following bill of sale was bought to be recorded to wit. So a lot of times I'm having conversations with ADOS, the American Descendants of Slavery, and they say, oh, I saw a bill of sale. You want to know what that bill of sale was? The United States government made our ancestors give up whatever property they had gained through the queen and kings of England. Queen Anne's County, the queen had granted these people these lands to work the lands for the benefit of the empire. And all of a sudden, the newly established United States wasn't even instituted until 1776, insurrected against the queen and the king, and then took their land. So people are like, oh, I saw a bill of sale. That means my ancestors were sold. It means your ancestors sold the land, the property. People yeah. like, my ancestors were traded as property. No, your ancestors, just like your Social Security today, is bonded. Just like today, you are traded your Social Security and birth certificate across the stock markets in China as a fiat. But you, idiot, can never be a prop. You are not a piece of property. No, because black people walk around believing we from, it's well set. We from Brazil, South America, the Caribbean islands. We can be from Asia. We can be Asiatic. We can be African. We can be, but we can't be from America. Oh no, that wasn't us. We claim parts of Mexico. We claim everywhere else comes America. No, we was just slaves only. <laughs> Why y'all so quick to believe the bullshit? Because, because they, because they, 
Because they've been programmed, Oprah, and they were taught in school, yeah. and they yeah, I'm, but but at some at some point, if other lo- if you have been programmed to think logically and other shit logically doesn't make sense, why the right. fuck is this? Yeah, because they their identity now is tied to slavery. They don't have they don't know anything else. So when we talk to them about native culture, they feel like oh that's something else new I have to learn. When it's yeah. stuff that they've already been doing, cornbread, sweet potatoes. This yeah, shit, everything you do is already for people to come around the world and say we ain't got no culture, but they love hip hop. No, but no, but even then they'll turn around and think that that's so food. That's your name. That ain't good for y'all. Collard greens, fucking like you said, potatoes, corn, some cornbread, some motherfucking grits, nigga, <laughs> catfish <laughs> and grits, some chicken, some fried chicken, some baked chicken. Ain't nobody else in the world frying chicken like with that cornmeal. <laughs> Them, them Asians be trying. Them fucking Chinese restaurants be trying, but that chicken don't taste the same. That is not. That is not even chicken. Okay? <laughs> I don't know what the fuck that is. So y'all walk around here. I already, already got it. Y'all, 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 don't, y'all just think that y'all gotta go learn some, some, some uh, uh, powwows and, and, and that. That's what, that's what black people think when they think, when they think about, oh shit, I'm Native American now. I gotta go get the culture. Let me go get some feathers. Let me yeah. go get my feathers mm-hmm. together. It's like, no, just continue to do you, be who you the fuck is. Yeah, but also, if you do want to go get feathers and turquoise. Already, it's already, it's already yeah. you. Whatever, if you're Native American. Mm. I'm not trying to say every black person in America is, because people are mixed, and people are African in America. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But those who are Native American, whatever you do is already that. Yes, we have some shit that we may need to grasp onto our culture, our community and family. You know what I'm saying? But whatever you do is Native American because you are. You know what I'm saying? It's like even 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 when it comes to if you think you African, whatever, whatever, they, whatever you're Peace doing, pie, that, you pie, you you that like to smoke weed, that's herbal. And, and it's like just because everything we back do, in, call everything. Whatever, whatever they may have done back in the 1500s or whatever, just be. Things were different then. So whatever you're doing now in this day and age, our family was, our, our moms was doing shit back in the 50s and 60s differently than how we do today. Do we try to go back and try to reiterate? That's why my problem is. We try to, we want to reiterate everything they did. You nigg- Even if your niggas is comedic, your niggas ain't building no pyramids. That part, I ain't seen it. Do it seen again. It. I ain't, do it again. You did it once, you're so comedic, do it again. But you ain't, I ain't seen it, so what the fuck? So what I'm saying is, won't you pick up and gain some new knowledge, set some new trends, build a new culture, build new communities, own some fucking land. Not just claiming lands and sets and all that, whatever, and you niggas don't even own a fucking house on the block. Mm. So we're telling you, well, you have some land, you 40 acres and a mule, you don't have to go and seek for that. Just fill out your paperwork. Go back to your genealogy. Why are y'all so scared to go look up your genealogy? Y'all scared? What you scared? You want? They want to talk about the ancestors, but don't know their names. Listen, I'm I'm more scared when you tell me that I'm a slave from Africa. That that's very hopeless. That's hopeless to me. That's like, oh shit, that's so much dead ends. That's too fucking far. I, I'm more at a dead end thinking I'm African American than somebody telling me I'm already on my fucking land. You have a better chance of finding your genealogy here than you sitting out on your ass believing you're African American and never having no kind of trace to no African nothing. So you right got a better fighting chance with this land saying your ancestors come from this land. It's, it's, you have more access and more closer to your family records here in America knowing that you're African American than the fuck you do out in Africa. But you're really lazy and you don't want to look that information up. So you just say, okay, well, I'm African American. Even today, I had my doctor appointment today. You know what I put on my fucking paperwork? African American. I mean, uh, uh, Native American. I didn't, put, I didn't fill out no more. Bitch, ask me for my information if you want to. Because it doesn't matter. First of all, y'all let these motherfucking gender fluid motherfuckers put whatever the fuck they want. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not putting black on. I'm not putting black on. I'm not putting African American black on shit else. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and, and I don't even need fucking tribal registration to tell me that because I already seen my certificate affidavit. Oh! Oh, 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 <laughs> Did you fancy? <laughs> See, I, I don't even need. I don't even need the, the tribal registration paperwork for me to start claiming that. So I'm not black. Don't call, call me black. Don't call me African American. I ain't none of that shit. And when I speak to the black community, it's because when I say the word black, it's because y'all out here say y'all black. 
and I don't know, I, I, I don't know how to talk to y'all or address y'all. <laughs> I'm just gonna start calling y'all people in me- the melanin community. <laughs> the melanin community. But even then, they always try to talk about somebody, people of color. People, get the fuck out of here. People of color. Uh, people, who, where, when, what, and how? Only people of color I know is the people that's you brown with some with some brown parents, brown grandparents. I don't know about this other shit. I, I'm gonna I'm walk around saying no Mexicans and people of color. Yeah, I don't know about I don't know about that. And I, I don't call uh, Asian people yellow. I don't believe in that because I don't think they're yellow. I think they white. If anything, these these white motherfuckers are they're hybrids. Me. They got the black hair and white skin. Yeah, like like the like the, like the Asians, like the, the like the Chinese. When we went to China, Lala, I didn't see no, I didn't see nothing yellow about them. So who the fuck is walking around saying the yellow? Yeah, 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 not calling them yellow. But when it comes to black people, black, and when it comes to white people, white. But everybody else gets there. When people come from China or Guam, you know, people call them by their what they are. But when it comes to black people, oh, you just black, cause cause y'all history is all lost. No, and no, fuck that. And white people ain't just fucking white. Them niggas is fucking Scandinavian, Russians, and. Lala, when they be doing these movie roles, uh, uh I watched the movie, uh, I watched um, Black Widow or whatever the fuck. What them niggas? What they was not no white bitches. People will call Scar Johansson white real fast, but that bitch ain't no white. She's fucking she Russian or some Ukrainian shit or something. You didn't see? I don't know if you see, but that bitch got a, she she speak the language, okay? Yeah. Oh, Mila Kunis, Mila Kunis, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do, you see these, do you see them do these other movie roles and they speaking the British and all that other shit perfectly because what the fuck they are. So why are we calling them white? I'm not calling y'all white no more either. Oh, what are you? Where, where are you from? Neanderthals. It's, y'all niggas, you Ukrainian, your ass Russian, your ass is German, your ass is Turkish, your ass is uh whatever the fuck, whatever the fuck, but you're not white. Slavic, somebody says Slavic. Yeah, they all that shit. So, but guess what? The reason why they tell, then they turn around and say, well, black people is the minority. Black people is the minority. But bitch, you might be the minority too if we start counting all the Germans in the room. You might be the minority too if we start counting all the Russians in the room. Because I know I live in an Asian community. I don't see no white people. I, I might be the only black family. I think it's one other black family. But I'll tell you one thing. It's one other black family, ain't it? Yeah, it's, it's like two. No it's no white people. So you know minority over here. So it's like, that is nothing but psychological war. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it is. It, it is psychological. And then they give you movies that say and show you up. They got Italian immigrants playing Native Americans. Yeah. They got Mexican Spaniards playing the Mayan and the Aztec. So we they got- have yeah. the people over the tribes white. If you go to CherokeeNation.org, all the little pictures and all that shit, is a bunch of fight, fucking white people. You don't see that nigga even in the background. People through like, I want to be a part of the photo shoot. <laughs> Posing in the background. You don't even see us nowhere. But Reggie, Reggie lives on the reservation. Reggie, they got a hood. They call it the hood in uh, Choctaw, Ada, Oklahoma. Okay. They call it the hood. But none of their brochures will depict any black people. But as soon as they want to talk about, I'm not racist. My great, 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 great grandfather was African. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. They, they they want they want to claim that African blood whenever they want to prove that they're not racist and and uh, no no because I got a little bit of African blood in me because my great 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 grandpa we chased him back he was South African and then when he talked when he talked about some Native Americans it's like oh no we're Native American because y'all think these Mexicans and Asians mix is, is is the Native Americans so someone asked what about the uh, let me put the question up the Asian Asian area Indian and Asian okay so let's that? go to that okay so a lot of people are like why do y'all call yourselves Indian because of India well in 1492 it was called Hindustan those people are Hindu they speak Hindi so that, is it, what is known as India today yeah was called Hindustan and 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 Hindu Kush Hindu Kush uh, civilization, the Dravidians, Brahmin, all that whole caste system. So those people are considered Hindu. Those are the Hindu. At that time, that whole area was part of the Hindu. Uh, is a, these are vast empires. So no, they, he didn't think he was in India. Actually, Columbus never stepped foot in the mainland continent. He was only in the Bahamas. He never. He was in the Caribbean. So all that Columbus was saying. So you mean to tell me you think there was some AAPI? Asian Chinese looking motherfuckers in the in the Caribbean in 1400s. Wow, wow. So we, we no, they don't talk about that either because then they go start still, they still gonna go back to 
those people, those Aboriginal people of those areas are black. So it's like, so if, if they're black over there, what makes you think they want black over here? Yeah. It's like everybody quick to be like, no, because the minute Republican is black, they know Cardi B black because the DR in Puerto Rico is black. Well, guess what? That shit ain't that far from here. So, she black melanin. She black melanin. <laughs> yeah, no, she got some melanin dick in her. She got some black dick in her. Yeah. She 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 got she got some 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 coarse hair. But why? I don't know why everybody think that white people don't. I know a lot of only white people. It's all white with some nappy ass fucking hair. Like that ain't got nothing to do with you being black 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 is not relative to nappy ass hair and let's talk about that word indian indios dios means in spanish remember they make contact with the spaniards italian um first that indios means deos dios that's god the people of god indios indigenous indios okay D-I-O-S, D-E-U-S, D-I-O. We even have an Indio, California. So some people call them engines. They may call them Indio. So that's that. So the reason we refer to it as American Indian, because that's what they called the people upon first contact. And 500, 600 years later, we are the descendant of those people who are American, who are listed as American Indians. But essentially, we are our tribes. So if I meet a Shinnecock sister out there from Massachusetts, she, uh, hi, you're Shinnecock, hi, I'm Muscogee, I'm Cherokee. So we don't even go into all that color code and all that. But we're saying collectively, anytime they went to Brazil, dang, Indians. They went in the Caribbean, Indians, Trinidad, Indian, Arawak, Tanyo, all these people. So we can go into the Mayan culture, that's Aztec, that's it's a lot, but that's just where we are today. Um, I don't know where else you want to go in the conversation, sister. But um, no, 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 I just want to make people understand, like, don't be so quick to accept the title of somebody telling you that you're African American. You don't question that. But somebody says, "Oh, you're Native American." It's like, eh, I don't know about that because you, I, because you translate national Native American to the the white man that was on TV with the little tear falling. Yeah, out. so many people have placed their identity <laughs> in a slave narrative. I'm gonna see yeah. if I can pull up some pictures though. Just so you can understand the different uh, ways in which these people uh, and uh, uh, Oprah, we talked a little bit about the colorism that comes with it. If you don't have a certain type of hair grade or anything like that, did you want to talk about that? Because yeah, like if you don't have like the people like, oh, I'm got any me. That's why my hair is like this. It's like uh, no, no, that that's not it. You only you got any any if your if your motherfucking genealogy traces back. It has nothing to do with. I knew I was any. That's why my hair is curly like this. It's like, please, people, stop that shit. Polygenetics is why people's hair is like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. What? Multiple genes is why people have different hair types. Yeah, it's like what? Like they have nappy hair. They they white people have nappy hair. White have straight hair. Like hair, I feel like hair type is 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 coil hair is protective barrier. Yeah, based off of the region that you're originally from, it's why your hair texture is the way it is. Mm -hmm. Based off where mm -hmm. your ancestors are from is why your hair texture. Based off why your nose is shaped a certain way is based off that. Like 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 phenotypes is based off your environment that your ancestors come from, the environment that they come from. And it's not necessarily because you got some white in you, so you got a little bit of 4A to your hair. No. Well, you got some Native American, that's why you got some 4A to your hair. No, because it's Native Americans with straight hair that's darker, darker than me. It's Native Americans with... Lala, where's your Native American pictures at? Okay, I was going to put them up. Um, yeah. So this is called an emblem of America, and I was just going to add it to the broadcast i guess because you can't i wanted you to see the bottom now this is what um they said was an emblem of america all right i'm gonna yeah dark skin see where it says emblem of america and this is what they were noting so most people in their mind they see that they think instantly africa yeah africa they instantly think Africa. You're gonna when you see this in art, when you see a headdress with feathers, you might see even a crown. Um, we'll we'll go back to the photos. I just wanted people to see that. Um, I'm gonna show some more. And my pictures got a lot of more, more, Moorish history as well. So you'll probably see a lot of European stuff. That's just where I am in my research. But one, and even when you see pictures of they they say these are slaves on this plantation. A lot of them was Okay, here look at this. What look we think about the land. Why is it so little? 
Of course, they're going to want to make her look bigger. That, 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 again, art. There you go. That psychological programming. Make her taller. Make them small. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's how they say. That's how fuck shit. Mm -hmm. See, they here. <laughs> and then she coming to America and blah, 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 blah. They, are they in change? Are they slaves? No. This is Montezuma. Everybody knows the story about Montezuma. Montezuma being um, the chief that when they were making their way to the mainland continent, he was the chief at the time. This is what we call parts of Mexico today. All right. Also America. All these different artworks, sketches, beautiful. Look, again, you see the head. Marcus, you, Marcus, you are correct. We are also European as well. And yeah. we are the original Europeans. Yeah. We everywhere. It says American right there. Again. No, we can't see that blue line. Yeah, it's kind of like moving up. Yeah, I, I've tried. It, it's kind of... Uh, what does it say? Australia? Australia, Lord. Uh, Pacific, I, the Pacific Ocean as well. The people look like that out in the Pacific, in Hawaii. These are like, these are like old coins, huh? Yeah, old coins, pictures, emblem, all this That's stuff. Like, and niggas didn't just make this shit up, like, today. Yeah, this is what the, the uh, people that were coming. And anytime you see our people depicted in a way that's not caricatures, you could tell the artist was probably a European more making these drawings because the way they drew it was with respect. And this is truth and accuracy. A lot of maps, a lot of maps. Amerique. Yeah, that's French. Mm -hmm. The Statue of Liberty. But even with the, st but look at this. With the even the Statue of Liberty was black. Well, not black, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah, represent my yacht. Yes, but look, no, even no. then, after this is then, represent the Emancipation Proclamation, and they still got a depiction of, and it, even in the 1700s, this is a French girl coming, and this is an American. They're coming. Indigenous. Again, Americans. These are working the docks, working the ports. I got a lot of stuff. Those are Aztec, again, Montezuma, more American. All the, this is 1671, okay? In Mexico, the Aztec. Okay, so ain't nobody populated the Americas with Africans. It just didn't happen. This is Incan, the Incans, Spanish. They, they went to Spain. Spain didn't come to them. Oh, this is so deep. They went to Spain. Columbus had to, uh, so what was happening is that people were going back and forth. These Moors were being expelled. They would come in. There, there, there. People didn't know where the Moors go. Where the Moors going to this new world? What's the new world? The Moors already had an imp, so-called Moors was really in indigenous Americans, already had trade routes with the Europeans. So by the time after the uh, Neanderthals finally took a hold of Spain and the Catholic Church, they looked up and said, oh shit, there's a whole new world that we don't even really know about. But these people were already kings. These were Incan ruler, Carlos Quinto. You think they put hairdressers like this on slaves? Exactly. This is Peru. All this stuff. So this is the Mayan Aztec right here in Mexico. That's why we always in Mexico. A lot. This is this is. But what they do over there is they try to uh, whitewash everything, make, make lighten the skin, make everybody identify with the people that's there today. Right. Look at the Mayan and the Aztec. Do these people look like slaves? Look at even the people here. Even if they were at war, it was still them versus them. And that's probably, look, their hair. Look, they still got the same hair. This could have been people that it's disobeyed. Like yeah, look at that. This could have been people that disobeyed the king. Look at them. They ain't got no clothes on. It doesn't mean slavery. It could have been if you disobey the chief here. So I, I had to put that one in there. Do you uh -oh. not see it? <laughs> he can be my king. He, they look just like. <laughs> Jesus. That, everybody know that's Shannon Sharp. I mean, come on. How you? Same color. You maintain your color. Nose, same nose, cheeks, mouth, everything. Lips. The lips is even shaped the same way. And we supposed to believe we are. But if you didn't see that, Australia, if you didn't see that American part, you would think that that's an African you were looking at. But anytime I want you to look, those feathers do mean something. If you do see a feather on the ground, pick it up. Add it to your cap, add it to your headdress. Now, people, again, you would see this and think, oh, that's African. This is Panama. That's Mexico, areas of the day of Mexico in 500 AD. These artifacts are in museums, and you'd be like, oh, look at the nice African art. All this is Mayan, Aztec culture. I got so many pictures. You know, you, I know you've seen this in Mexico, Oprah. Mm -hmm. at Hotel Calafia, that's me with it. Yeah. And it's the Omic head. Me did my little eye right there. 
These are Vicento Guerrero who helped fight during all these Mexican wars. That's Sarah Rector. Oprah, you want to tell the story of Sarah Rector? Well, Sarah Rector was the one that had uh, the first millionaire in Missouri, right? Okay, yeah. She was Muscogee Creek. I'll put the book there if anybody wants. Take a look. It's in a book. Reading a rainbow. I hear you anywhere. She was Muscogee Creek now. See, yeah, she was a little girl there. Okay? Sarah Rector. I'll put it there to the side. Now, take a look. It's in a book. All right, so I put the book there um, if you want to check it out. Now, Sarah Rector was a newborn when she received her 256 acres from Muscogee Creek land. Again, remember we told you that this is an area of Tulsa. So her family all got their land allotments. Now, her being the newborn in the family, she got 200 acres. When she got a little bit older... Her dad was pressed for cash, so he sold just a piece of her, just a little bit, not too much, but just a little minority stake share in her land and sold it to a company that said they wanted to mine for oil. They did strike oil, and her family in the 19, I say, woo, in the early 1900s, was receiving anywhere from about eleven to $12,000 a month. For the rest of her life, they struck oil and they had to lease it out and pay her family. She ended up becoming a millionaire. She was known as the richest black girl. Remember, they put that black on. She was Creek Muscogee. So if you read about her, they're going to say, Sarah Rector was Creek Muscogee and African-American. You look her up. If you, anybody look her up, they'll say, if you read certain tests, some people just say, look, she was Muscogee, Native American. It was what it was. Yeah, like she's Creek Muscogee, African-American. She's Native American, African American. Yeah. So what happened was white people found out about her. A lot, a lot of men. This is why everybody thinks she's black. A lot of men tried to marry into her family. Made uh, four. They said four European men made marriage proposals to her. They wanted to marry her. Y'all keep thinking y'all ancestors were raped. No, your ancestors were married off. To these men, because they couldn't, they weren't finding no women. They wanted somebody with birthrights in this land. They wanted somebody with inheritance in this land. Y'all keep hearing these stories about th these slave masters had babies with their slave. They think you're a slave. They think you're inferior, but they want to have babies with you. No, they want to have babies so they can say, "Yes, I was born in Scotland or I was born somewhere," but they wanted to say, "I have a my baby's child has a mother of American descent." That's what they wanted. So anyway, they said that her family was mistreating her. They were trying to get her taken away from her family. And basically, when the NAACP, well, so-called NAACP of its time, which was uh, Booker T. Washington, and I think it was even Carter G. Woodson who got involved, they were like, she's okay. You know, they were trying to get her to take away. So what they had to do was change her status to white because... White did not mean color. It mean wealth and property. She had money. So, so she could ride in the front of the trains. So she wouldn't face certain discriminations. She's listed as white. So you'll go back in history with no images and say, oh, she was white, Muscogee Creek. But she was white so she can get first class benefits. To be black is to be nothing. Because white was a status, not a skin color. Yeah, it's not a skin color. So just a lot of things like that. So I wanted to point that out. I mean, I got pictures for days. You can you can do your own um, research. This is one of my favorites, though. Um, they got this idea that white people were scalping us. If you see that, uh, exterminate all the brutes. And I like this because look at how he he's got the machete there. He's got the colonizers. So they fucking up in the back, and he's like, "Ew! Look at how he's looking." <laughs> Look how he's looking at it like, ew, he scalped them. I, that's one of my favorites. So I got a lot of, oh, I love this one. I was talking about tobacco and weed. Look at that. So slaves are smoking weed on the job now? Exactly. Sometimes I just got to. And then I was talking to some guy last night. He was like, my family was slaves on a uh, uh, tobacco farm. Nigga, your family used to own that farm, but I'm not going to tell them. Cause they, you know he keep, I said you keep putting your ancestors into slavery. I'm telling you, your ancestors own the farm. And he's thinking my ancestors were a tobacco farm in Virginia. 
Oh, all right. Oh, real quick. This is Brazil. These pictures are from Brazil in 1428. You see this Oprah? Yeah. Before Columbus came in 1492, the, all those Moors that were expelled, they had to go somewhere. They said, shit, we're going back home. All right, we couldn't take over England like we thought we were dethroned. They were beheading kings. They look at, they, they got pets. Look at the baby girl in the 1400, this is 1400 Brazil. Tell me again how these people are African slaves. The gig is up. Look at them going to church. We the Holy Roman Empire. We the, that's why, that's why black people really can't. They can't leave the Christian church. They really can't leave church. Even though they really don't understand it, they still, they're, it's a binding. You got all Oprah. You know how we are about, I love black fashion. I love this. Indians. This is 1816. That's San Jose. Look at this. Okay, so, all right, this is Native American, Paleo Indians. So why are people so ashamed of agriculture and farming and planting? Oh yeah, there was plantations, but it was our, it was us. Nobody really had to say that they owned it. It's just so weird. So I got the Yuki Indians. All right, that's uh, certain parts of Georgia. All these different images. Mommy, that that's coming in from the Caribbean. I did. They look over me, and, me and Azari. Look how I had the, you know, remember that? She put herself all over her scar. And look, look, me and Azaria. Look, the baby, and me and Azaria. <laughs> Look, anytime you see the Moors, those are those are very well come and find out. Those are indigenous American. I got so many pictures. Look, this is one of my favorites. The Californian black Indians. Indians hunting in San Francisco. This was around, uh, let's see, the painting was done around 1822. So how much longer are we supposed to go around and claim this slave narrative? You got all the all the American, they call them a savage. Call them a savage. Look at the Savages wearing floral crowns and beads and gold and animal print. So we went to Great Britain. You know who wears snow leopard print like that? The kings and queens of England. So, so many images. I got them for days. Just like our people. Now, change all the clothes. Was them leggings? I don't know. What is it? I like them. I like that outfit. I like that outfit. <laughs> That's a with the, and then it comes break off with the boots breaking. with the fur. Where you think they got that from? You don't see no Africans wear that. We got boots with the fur. We got so much. The and Indian and king. That's what I'm saying. And they all had different hair types and different hair textures, different skin colors. It was not no fucking white people, not these European white. This people. is the Fox Indians of Wisconsin in 1781. So many things. So uh, there so, you have so, it. So when Cherokee, so when. These white, so that's like they're trying to give us a, the runaround for our shit and all that. It's like, well, let me well, la one last thing I wanted to show. Now the map. Now look at the maps. I'm gonna zoom in here for us. Yeah, please, no, because it's Virginia. Fun. These were the maps. Virginia. Look at the people they're showing <laughs> right there in Florida, Virginia. This is what the people look like. Parts of Virginia, all the way down to what they call Florida, <laughs> going all the way down. It's not near. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> now look at these people up here in another map. That's I believe that is also uh, they, they were certain areas. So they would use it in wherever area they would they would put right here. They would say I seen one that said Carolinas for that part. So oh yeah, this is now this is Semin this is a a Seminole Indian right? Yeah, look at her in Miami. All right, you always talk about a hair texture. <laughs> Do we not wear our hairs like this today? <laughs> and people call it horse hair. You see that? Now look at that. Also Seminole Indians. And his bride. Oh, the club. <laughs> you again you see the feather. That's a club photo. Oh, I know. They were getting married. All these things. Look, Paraguay. That's South America. They tell you what the people look like that they saw. This is 18 or excuse me, 1671. 1671 Paraguay. So many things. So many beautiful melanated people. The Mayan and the Aztec. So we we that's on you. You need to go back and do your genealogy. You need to go do this your history. But we got it from here. So we are registered with Cherokee Nation. And I don't know why people uh don't know enough about American history, but that's just the way it is. Like you probably live if you live in one of the 13 original colonies, go learn about your charters. Ask your eldest person in your family, do y'all have Indian in your family? And you got to forget they were also 
killing Indians. Hello, like they killing niggas. They was killing Indians. So either you stop all that Indian talk, all that indigenous talk, and you claim to be an American citizen, or we kill you. So some people were intimidated, and they just stopped talking about their Indian culture. There's a lot of y'all's grandparents that just simply don't talk about it. It's too painful. Nobody wants to keep living the past, but what you going to do about it? So yeah. what you going to do? Why are you going to sit there and relive it? Nobody ever gave them justice. But, you know, a lot of people are still alive to tell their story. So that's just where we are. A lot of the people that were testifying about what happened 100 years ago in Tulsa, they're about 107, 108 years old. They're still here. They live long enough just to go testify. Maybe somebody will do something about it. But a lot of that, why y'all ain't got this and why y'all ain't got that, that's the point of repatriating. And that's why they're looking for us. Like the story of Sarah Rector. They want oil. They want that oil that's under our land. And we ain't selling. We ain't selling. We kept that land in our family. We're going to continue to keep that land. So the things you think you know about African Americans is Black History Month. And, and just open your mind. What stories are they sharing? All these amazing things we done. They ain't telling you none about all of this. But they're going to tell you, Carter G. Woodson was born a slave. Harriet Tubman. Harriet Tubman's family was the raw steward. She didn't rescue no 1,000 people. She didn't even rescue 100 people. Harriet Tubman <laughs> didn't rescue no more than 36 people. And they were all her family, the raw steward family. Who was steward raw family to the king of England. Her family was the raw stewards of the king. To mean steward means a custodianship, like the stewards of the land. So her name was Araminta Ross. So how disrespectful is that? 100 years later, 200, 300 years later, somebody just completely just changed your name to whatever they wanted it to be. It is what it is. So if anything else, I appreciate those who turned, who tuned in, who had questions, who had comments. We appreciate you all. Yes, yeah, stewardship. So here, Araminta Ross, there's an area out in Scotland, Ireland called Ross. Um, the, the ships and all the people that she rescued were all last name either Ross Stewart or both Ross Stewart. It's about bridging the families together. So, uh, Sis Star, did you have any more you wanted to say? I know your, your, your audience has been pretty receptive to this information, correct? They've been pretty chill. Yeah. Anybody else that yeah. has anything negative to say? You probably don't even know who your, your daddy is. Um, God love her. <laughs> she was very classy at first. <laughs> and you probably don't know who your great-grandparents are. But if you're going to be like, say they name, say they name, say your great-grandparents' name. I think it's worth repeating. Pour libations for them, honor them, remember the ancestors. All, all that we're doing is to reclaim what was lost from our ancestors. There's no greater reparations than getting the land that they confiscated, the plantations that they took away. That is what's going on. So a lot of Africans, they're like, oh, stop all this Indian talk. We need to unite. If you truly come to America and you want to unite with the indigenous Americans, the American Indians, the Native Americans, then help us get our land back. Why do we have to assimilate to your agenda? Why do we have to open our HBCUs up to Africans? Why do we, when they defund in our schools and our schools are then flooded with Africans and now our schools are overcrowded and our kids can't learn in school because the classrooms are oversized and overcrowded and overfilled. Thank you. Thank you so much. If anybody else has any questions, we'll put this up on YouTube so you can check the replays, share this with your family and friends. You guys should have shared the video. This is valuable information. I think this is a great way to start off Black History Month. We uh, have been referred to everything as people of color. Oh, God, there's so much more. Real quick, I do have one more book I want to share. Because a lot of people are like, okay, Lila, I don't have people in Oklahoma. I have people in North Carolina. Um, there's another book that I want to recommend. It's called uh, North Carolina's Free People of Color, 1715. And I'm going to read for you this. This is what's going to hopefully bring it into some... Um, and I'm getting, I'm getting a lot of information from the Louisiana State Press. But North Carolina's free people of color. I'm going to read this for you. Here we go. Here's the book here. And I'll, and I'll put it back. I'll put it up. It says, and I'll, let me see. Maybe I can do this. I want to make sure. Take a look. We got another book. Sorry, I'm a nerd. That's why I want my blurred shirt. All right, I'm going to read this for you and, let, and, and, and get this. In North Carolina's Free People of Color, 1715 to 1885, Warren Eugene Milter examines the lives of free people of color, the lives of free persons categorized by their community. This is what they called them. They called them Negroes, Mulattoes, Musties. They called them Indians and or Mixed Bloods. Or simply they just call them free people of color. 
From the colonial period through Reconstruction, lawmakers passed legislation that curbed the rights and privileges of these non-enslaved residents. Again, in North Carolina, we know about Queen Sophia Charlotte, Charlotte, North Carolina being the queen city. These were non-enslaved residents, okay, from 1715. They, they, but they created laws as the United States was becoming what it is. They created laws that prohibited their testimony against whites in a court of law. They barred them from the ballot box as well where they couldn't vote. While such laws suggest that most white North Carolinians desire to limit the freedoms and civil liberties enjoyed by the free people of color. Do you get that? White people wanted to be like the black people because the black people had so many rights. A lot of white people were enslaved. And my friend Crystal Spalding always quotes the statistics that there were 30,000 free people of color. There were 15,000 whites in this area and 5,000 slaves for their population, okay, in a certain county. Of 5,000 people that were slaves, they were both white, they were both people of color, or black among mm -hmm. all the slaves. So you're going to find out that a lot of white people are going to get reparations too. So they revealed yeah. that they, these two groups often interacted. They prayed together, they worked the same land, and they occasionally shared households, and they even started families together. Some free people of color also rose to prominence in their communities, becoming successful business people and winning the respect of even their white neighbors. So they, so check this out. North Carolina's free people of color. There's a lot of uh, things that people don't know in our community. They just assume that we were all slaves. So uh, certain people are looking into their genealogy and they're finding something totally different. So I wanted to get that going as well. Yes, welcome. Yes, yeah, so basically, um, our people have always had first class citizenship. But when we start saying, say it loud, notice James Brown and say, I'm, I'm black and I'm proud. Mm -hmm. Get the little baby kids say it. So, um, but other than that, there's a, there's a lot more to it. But I would just say, start with the 13 original colonies. Know that uh, Georgia was named after King George of Blackamoor. Let's see if I can find that picture. Let's see if I can find that. The coin, because I want y'all to know what King George looked like. Got so much stuff from uh, Mexico. The Barbados Penny of 1788. Oh, I, I do, I do. I got a lot of Indian um, stuff. That, and I also go around and I travel. Let's see if I can find the same. If not, I just pull up on the internet real quick. Let's see. You know, I'm, I'm into coins for people that follow me. I'm heavy into coins. My sister is really good at pulling a lot of that medieval art as well. We did that. Oh, yeah. Yep. Remember all that medieval art? Who's to say that those people weren't Indians? And I'm like, why wouldn't you want money? Why do people ignore that black people were on the money in 1788? Okay, I'm going to put it in just real quick. Because a king, this is real quick, and I'll say this, and then we can wrap it up. It's important to note King James because out of the 13 original colonies, the first uh, of the 13 original colonies uh, to institute slavery was Georgia. King George was a black German, Blackamore Hanover. So I'm going to put King George Barbados Penny, 1788. It was minted and was actually in use and in circulation. But of course, they're going to act like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. So that's what we have to deal with a lot of in our communities. Um, let's see if I can find this one from Real History. And then we can, because this is important because uh, Georgia being the first of the 13 original colonies to institute slavery, King George being a blackamoor. Oops, no. I don't want that. I'm just trying to get this. Oh, that was a video. Okay, I'm just trying to find the image. Hmm. Oh, somebody did a video on it. I just... There's so many good uh, videos on it. And I, I used to have it in my photos, but I can't find it all of a sudden. All right. Let's see. I'll open in this. Open tab. And it's got a pineapple on it and all that good stuff. Let's see. Let's see if I could just zoom in here. I guess somebody put it on Twitter. All of a sudden, this shit is hard, so hard to find. I usually have it in my um. Let's see if I could just, oh, I can maybe just add the image. All right, I'll just add it here. Oh, or the click link. over, I could just drag it. Yay, great, sorry. 
All right. Oh, this is all big. Yeah. Look. All right. I'm just going to put it there. Oprah, you're so low. I don't want to mess with your face. But that's King George, Barbados Penny, 1788, 1792. As you can see, again, the crown and the feathers. The crown jewels and the feathers. So that's King George the Third. So we can stop there. You good, sis? Yes. Oh, we don't even get into the burial mounds. I have burial mounds. You good, sis? I'm sorry. I'm yeah. Good. I hear you now. Okay. Does Tila have anything she want to say? And did Reggie want to chime in, or is he good today? Reggie downstairs. Yeah, yeah. So we can talk more about the benefits, but people need to even just know that their family, uh, their family history, their family story. And so I was, I've been on Clubhouse talking about it, and I'm always asking people like, how is it that you're so angry at you don't like the way things are going with the reparations proposal bill the, to study reparations, HR 40? Is on the docket. A lot of people are like, oh, this person's not doing it right. And this person's going to mess up our reparation claim. Well, there's nothing quite like knowing who your ancestors are. You know, so ain't nobody going to mess up your reparations claim. You go learn who your ancestors were. Go know their names. What's up? Nothing. Oh, okay. You want to stay on or are you good? No, I'm good. Well, I'm okay. up, Lala. I'm going to up in 20 minutes. You said what? I got picked up in 20 minutes. Oh, okay. Okay. Got you. Got you. Got you. You good? Who you who you who you cheesing at? <laughs> I can't see her. Oh hi, look beautiful. That's our cousin. Hi, baby cousin. Baby cousin. Oprah keeps on her baby cousin. Baby cousin. Okay. But. Okay, Lala. Bye. Y'all was so good. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Oprah. I'm gonna hang you up, Oprah. Um, that is my sister. Let's see. That is my sister. Um, I do want to leave. Let's see if I can get this going. I do want to leave with some more information. Whew. It's a lot. I like to keep it uh, in order as best I can. Let's see if I can pull this up. Um, there's a lot of good information online about it. You just got to search properly. And really, I'm just kind of getting over the point where I am. Um, oops. I'm getting over the point where I'm helping people with their genealogy because to me, it don't really matter. It, I'm going to be honest with you. It doesn't matter. Oh, I think I know what I can do. I wanted to wrap up with this video, leave y'all with a little bit of um, information. Oh, okay, great. Thank you for all your comments, thoughts, questions, concerns. And it's always good to have a guest on. I wanted to show y'all this video I've been working on. Um, I've been sharing it on, let's see, I've shared it on YouTube. I've shared it on Facebook. And we're going to, yeah. Right out with this, because um, they are finally admitting that all the African art, all the art labeled African and more, or they say Negro, come to find out, are actually Indigenous American. So I wanted to share this. Um, I worked on this piece, and I wanted to share it with you all. Great. Make sure we got our volume up. Exciting news from the art world. Dresden Castle's Green Vault Museum, one of the oldest museums in all of Europe. If you remember in 2009, then President Barack Obama walked the museum and toured this world-renowned site. Being one of the most historic museums in the world does come with its own set of controversies. The museum houses hundreds of artifacts, many of which come with racist, and offensive titles. However, much of the controversy comes from the inscrutable means in which these heirlooms and artifacts were received. In recognizing this, the Dresden State Art Collections has altered more than 100 work titles since 2020. In cases where there is a historic title or one given by the artist, terms that could be offensive, including Negro, Moor, Gypsy, have all been replaced with asterisks in the database. Now you may be asking, what does this have to do with me? And that's what's so exciting about the art world right now. Repatriation is the name of the game. For a certain group of people who have been told they have no generational wealth to inherit, the true story behind these artifacts may fascinate you.
One of the Green Vault Museum's most infamous statuettes, Moore with the of 1724, was actually based on images depicting indigenous Americans. A growing number of institutions on both sides of the Atlantic are pledging to return items back to the country of origin. So the next time you're in a museum and you see artwork and artifacts titled African, Moor, or Negro, you may be in fact looking at images depicting the portrayal of indigenous Americans. I love it. So basically, a lot of the artwork that is sitting in a lot of the museums in Germany, um, in the Louvre, around the world, Dresden's Castle's Green Vault is renaming all of those titles that were mislabeled more, and they have to put an asterisk on it now, and they have to denote that those Moorish artifacts, the treasures of Dresden, are actually um, American Indian. So I really am doing this to undo a lot of the psychological damage that has been done against our people. So I'm going to show a few more images. So next time you're in a museum or you're, you're researching and you see some things um, that you are aware. Symbolism is extremely important um, in these cases. So yes, let's see, I'm gonna go. Now I'm gonna show you some of the artwork that is actually labeled and titled as more but it's actually, um, all right, we'll start here. We'll get back to it. Thank you, you guys are awesome. Thank you to those that's, that are sticking around. So this is called Moor with Emerald Cluster. We've been taught this our whole life that these are the Moors and this is what they look like. We were, and it's at the museum, all right? It's at the museum, see here? more with emerald cluster he's got gold he's got emerald these are actually indigenous americans and the dresden castle has just admitted it i'll show you the article next indigenous americans again you see the feathers with the crown here you see the indigenous americans here all this is housed in the green vault in germany all right these are moors, as you can see, with the bow and arrow, the feathers, the, the kilt, the headdress. Again, the bow and arrow, as you can see. These are statuettes depicting indigenous Americans, but they named them Negro or sometimes even called them African, as you can see there, as you can see there. So that does a lot of damage. So basically, just to recap, we just talked a little bit. We just touched briefly on why certain groups of people were displaced and added to the Dolls Rolls in Oklahoma. But at the time, Oklahoma was just known as one big state in terms of it was being called Indian Territory. And then later, against the will of the Indians and so-called black people, they never wanted Oklahoma to be. They wanted Oklahoma to remain Indian territory because as Oklahoma was becoming a state, that means it will have to follow Jim Crow, which was a federal law at the time that says blacks don't have any rights or anybody that looks like this or anybody listed as that. So that's why a lot of the American Indians did not or do not or they still try to pressure you um, to not do well outside of the United States where a lot of people have to come back, look for jobs. Everything the United States here is due is for labor, labor, trade, and commerce, and taxes. American Indians should not be taxed. They should be paying the, we're supposed to take those taxes in for the well-being and protection of the American Indians. But as we know, treaties have been broken. So any other questions I am, definitely save this video. Anytime you see something mislabeled more, they're talking about indigenous Americans. I, I do want to show that article. I think I already have it up. Um, they've been accused of, oh, y'all just trying to be woke. Now white people are accusing white people of being, oh, you're just trying to be woke. You're just trying to be woke. Great. So this is from the art newspaper. It just came out a few days ago. Accused of cancel culture, the Dresden Museum defaming naming the works. So this, again, is called... I'm going to zoom in just a little bit here so y'all can see it. As you can see here, it's called 
the more with emerald cluster. It's in the Green Vault Museum in Dresden, Germany. All right. So again, not knowing, not being trained in art and symbolism and figurative uh, art. What is representing is actually of a indigenous American. Again, you see it there. I'm just going to go down to it and, um, and you can see it here yourself. In the cases where historic title or one given by the artist, terms that could cause offense, including Negro, Moor, and Gypsy, have all been replaced with asterisks in the database. But users who click on a trigger warning can still view the original title. One such work is the famous Moor with Emerald Cluster that we just showed in the Green Vault Museum. The statuette was actually depicting uh, ba images. The statue was actually based on images of indigenous Americans. Okay? Also here, in other cases, the organization has corrected inaccurate titles. For example, it eliminated the word Negres. You'll see that Negres in a lot of artwork from the non-historical title of the Rembrandt drawing in the Cooper Fustern cabinet, those are the Prince Gallery, because current uh, research suggests that the nude figure portrayed was not African. Like we said, African Americans ain't African, but it was just a light skinned woman laying on a couch. So that's this paragraph, this realization here is very important that part of them renaming the works, um, they have to actually um, admit that those were actually indigenous Americans. Again, this is in the art newspaper. This particular work they had to admit is actually depicting indigenous Americans. So let me know, how does that make you feel to realize this? Do you feel relieved? Do you feel vindicated? Do you feel like, aha, somebody finally understands me? Do you feel like, wow, all this stuff I've been saying is actually come to pass? You get what I'm saying? So these are things that I've always known, I've always talked about, but sometimes some people have a hard time believing this information until the whites validate it. They're still waiting for whites to validate um, our, our history and our uh, right to identify, self-determination, so and to self-govern is most important. So I thank you all for tuning in, all of you all that, yeah, she said, I feel war ready. I feel you on that. It makes you want to fight. It makes you want to wait. Wait, I got something to fight for. They've been telling us our whole lives that um, we don't have anything to fight for. And your last name literally is more. They're telling you that you don't have the records. Don't check. And so niggas like, well, they say we ain't had no records. I ain't got no records. And people come to find out, I done found my family was getting married in 1812. My family, my lineage, we owned land in New York in the 1700s. People are finding out, what? Yeah, they, they, did they tell you that they, they destroyed all the uh, evidence? And then you you believe in it, not looking for yourself. And then you just say, okay, whatever. And you don't look. Then to come to find out, you got a lot of unclaimed land. You have a lot of unclaimed uh, benefits. And if you don't get it, and if you continue to call yourself African-Americans, those Africans that are actually coming to America now, Second and third generations that have been here since the six, uh, probably about the seventies and the eighties, because it, ask, if an African said, "Ask an African, where are your great grandparents buried? Where are your grandparents buried? Their great grandparents? We're gonna grandmother and grandfather clause this in. We're gonna grandmother clause this, okay? When people want to know about solutions, if your grandparents weren't even are not even buried on this continent, if your grandparents weren't even born in America." We can't have a, simula uh, a conversation to how we are similar because that's a huge difference. So we're talking about our grandparents whose grandparents are from this continent. And they say, yeah, because of slavery. Like that's an empowerment tool for them. Yeah, because of slavery. Forget everything else. Forget that at the time of the Emancipation Proclamation, there were only 34 states. And the other part of the country was parts unknown in the wilderness. We don't even know. What, we didn't, they didn't even know about California yet. That wasn't even claimed. That was still Spanish, Spanish exploration, French exploration. So with that being said, I hope this information has been useful. Um, I'm just touching on it briefly because it's something my sister wanted to discuss. Um, when people find out that we are Indians, they want to uh, lay violent attacks. They want to say that we hate ourselves because we don't want to claim a foreign continent. Don't that sound like something that they did to the Indians? <gasps> 
African. They come, they, they, they must be Ethiopian. They even did. I have some friends that said that they had their family tested um, when they first came and they came to find out that those people did not match the Ethiopians at the time in the 16th, 1600, 17th century. They tested some of those uh, people on the eastern seaboard and come to find out, nope, they're not connected to the Ethiopians. They're not Africans. Um, a lot of this African-American misnomer has been part of the uh, American Colonization Society. If we could get them to believe, if we can indoctrinate them and, 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 and snatch them from their mother's homes and put them into these public schools, if we can only teach them in mass public education, publicly teach them all that they have no connection to this land and make them fall in love with Africa and Africa needs your help and you get to go save the day. Oh, ye of little income. <laughs> you go save Africa. Serena Williams, you got money? Go put a school in Africa. Fuck that, the fuck that we're defunding the schools in the States. Oprah, you want to build a school? Oprah Winfrey, not my sister Oprah, but Oprah Winfrey, you want to build a school? Put it in South Africa. Forget about the southernmost part of the United States. And now you got this love and affinity for Africa. Somebody says, I ain't African. <gasps> you don't love yourself and you don't know who you are. No, my grandmama said, well, your grandma didn't go to college. Your grandma didn't get the indoctrination is what you're saying. So you're killing our grandmas. But this is a mat. We, we keep saying our grandmas because, especially where we are in this present day and where we are in history, grandma's now about 60 to 80 years old. Our grandmas told us that their grandparents said they were Indian. But you are so enamored by the trinkets and the ooh and the love and the fiat currency of the European that you think that even we still trying to be, even the Europeans are misnomer. If you think European and you think white, the battle's already won. If you think American and you think old Nazi cowboy, white boy Christian, male patriarch, the battle's already gone. So a part of this, um, that's why I'm so heavily ingrained into the artwork is that we have to deprogram we have to decolonize and then we can talk about deportation <laughs> so you know my hashtag deport the colonizers deport 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 all of them all of them the african one we ain't we ain't discriminating when it comes to deportation we do not discriminate when it comes to deportation return to sender go back from whence they came repatriation means everybody got to get back with their ancestral tribe as this capitalist system is failing, everybody got to go back to their ancestral tribe. Repatriation, like I said in the video of the artwork, is the name of the game. Repatriation means to turn, return all those stolen artifacts and items, return it back to the country of origin. Stop telling people that this is African art. You know good and damn well you got that from South America, from the culture that existed there in 200 AD and 500 AD. Stop telling people that... Uh, the Olmecs and Mayans, and when you do your movies in the Aztec, were these Spaniards. Those are people, those are descendants of King Philip's court. Those are the people that came through the funding of the transatlantic slave trade. But what you're going to come to find out that there was no trade between Great Britain and Africa. So if the 13 original colonies were all Great, Great Britain, London, England, Scotland, Ireland, and they're still trying to figure out their balance of power over there, there was no trade with the Africans. The trading with the Africans was with the Portuguese in Ghana. They opened up that slave port. They opened up those trade ports. All right? So no, nobody was going to Africa, having a whole Civil War epic battle, taking the prisoners of war, and then taking them to the Caribbean. Because guess what? They still didn't make it to the mainland continent. I can't even say he brought them to America because they were taking them to the Caribbean. Where this, what, spoken Portuguese? This shit didn't happen. So a lot of people are like, oh, you're trying to erase my ancestors. You're trying to erase your ancestors because you don't know their names. You trying to erase your ancestors because you didn't, you, what they say in the movie um, Coco, the memory, the, your ancestors are uh, still alive as long as they are in your memories. And when the last person that remembered them died, they no longer exist. So that's why I'm digging like, nah, we about to resurrect some names up in here. Duckett, Clara, David, Sevilla, all y'all. Ezra, all y'all, we got to get all y'all going. <laughs> so yes, the Blackamoor Jacobites that were being expelled, maybe it was them being returned and repatriating back home. Because King George in the proclamation of 1763 told his subjects, yes, you are in this new world territory where people have lived for tens and hundreds of thousands of years. And there's mastodon bones in the parts of California. 
He told his subjects, do not go to war. These people do not fight. These people, we are connected to these people. King George Proclamation of 1763. Told, he told his wild subjects and deputies and governors to leave those people alone and let them hunt. Anything west of Georgia, which at this time Georgia include Georgia, Alabama, and Mississippi. He said anything west of that is Indian territory. Leave them alone. And they didn't like that. And they ended up revolting against their own king, King George. They went to break away from the British monarchy, from King James. So I think it's so amazing that you in your Bible talk about Jesus being black, but you also ignore the fact that King James was a blackamoor, blackamoor being indigenous American. Yes, yes. New world meant new jurisdiction, right? But remember those insurrectionist criminals, they rose up against the British monarchy. They broke away because the British monarchy was like, you can't have slaves. You're a subject to the king. How can you have slaves? In a, a feudal system, it was twofold. This is where that slavery comes into. A feudal, feudalism. People don't like to talk about feudalism. A vassal and serve. This overlord. So you had an overlord and you had a vassal, which y'all would uh, serve them, which y'all would call a slave. So the slave, they would do a ceremony. They would actually do a ritual. So the slave would bow down to the feet of the Lord, the overlord, and says, I will work the land. I will work for you. I will work for the, the benefit of the estate, okay? And then the overlord then bow down to the so-called worker, laborer, slave, if you want to call it, the vassal, would, would bow down and say, in return for your labor, I will give you shelter and protection, Okay? It was a, a it was a bound. <laughs> I guess we look, we talk with our hands. His hands saying. <laughs> so that's what it was. I bow down to you, you bow down to me. I recognize you, you recognize me. It's a mutually beneficial relationship. When somebody comes and says, fuck that, I'm going to enslave you, you're going to work for me, and I ain't going to protect you, then you know you protected what you claim to be your property and assets. So that don't fucking make sense. No. So they would go out, they would work the land, they would build the empire, they would cultivate, they would fish, they would farm. Who, who owned who? Because everything they did was for the service of the kingdom and the queendom and the empire. So nobody owned anybody. It was just about administration and, and legal work and, and business papers and documents, and bills of sales. So that's the nature of the business. Then, once those people said, what the fuck? King George was like, leave the Indians alone. If you want to buy and trade with the Indians, buy from the king. I'll buy from the Indians, you buy from the king. Because it was taxes, there was all unfair, not paying people the fair market value. A lot of shady shit. We're dealing with Neanderthals here, okay? And so they said, no, no more of this. No more buying things do the king. Uh, tax, kill Christmas addicts in Boston, Massachusetts, who was another Native American, a black man, you would call him today. Christmas addicts was killed. They've been, they tried to enslave him. They had to, they tried to hunt him down, change his name so nobody could find him. And then outpouring the shot heard around the world, the beginning of the American Revolutionary War, in which black people, the Indians, and the Moors, the loyalists to Britain, because there were some black people that was like, what the fuck is going on? We loyal to Great Britain. They fought in the American Revolutionary War. I just wanted to point that out, too. I want to point that out. That's why you see black people fighting on all sides. One side will use them for here. One side will use them for that. I think this is this my picture. I love this picture. It's one of my favorite pictures. So... You had some that were loyal to Great Britain, those Moors, indigenous Americans. They fought on both sides of the war, hoping that all the motherfuckers would leave. Ho hopefully, if one side lose, that one side will, will leave. And they just didn't leave. They just never left. So that's why a lot of y'all ancestors, you can check on Fold 3 when you get far to even knowing your ancestors' names to even look up. You'll come to find out that a lot of your ancestors did receive pensions from their war effort. But... This United States that just won the war didn't even have money for war, y'all. United States, newly formed, didn't even have money for war. The Continental Army, 
did not have enough money. They had to go to uh, France. They had to go to France for their financing for the war. And then when they win, allegedly, supposedly, France was like, France don't do nothing. That's why my last name, uh, uh, our last name, Duckett, is French. The money in Europe was called Duckett, all right? The French, they bought this. You finish on that money. We help you win a war. What well, we get out of it, right? So the United States was like, fuck, we have to pay them back. So they start telling black people, yeah, you are indebted to the United States. Huh? What's the United States? What's that? What, what's that? What, what's, y'all making shit up now? Y'all done combined all the estates? Oh, ha, 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 ha. Nope. You're black. You are not a subject of England anymore, even though you speak. I like to call them English Americans. The English, the, the French Americans. What, what the fuck language are you speaking? The English Americans are indigenous so when people talk about what language you still haven't figured it out huh the, those that created a whole ebonics language huh were well, you still thinking white people invented shit we because we because we can't invent like we can invent hip-hop rap tunes all that shit great so basically at the time of the American Revolutionary War, they burned down the first White House. They burned down the executive office of this newly formed United States because they didn't have any money to now pay the troops that survived the war. They didn't have enough income to pay them, so they burned it down. The insurrection. That's why you heard when they were storming the Capitol. 1776. Did you hear them when they were storming the U.S. Capitol on January 6th? 1776. They were living it all over again. They were living it all over again. You didn't have no money to pay. You didn't take care of us. We stormed the Capitol. Do this, do this. They, they, you had Donald Trump in office. What did he, what did Donald Trump do for white Americans? Question of the day. What did Donald Trump do for white Americans? Did they, did they get their slaves back? <laughs> the, the, the immigrants who claim they, so anyways. So basically, the United States didn't have enough money to pay, so they enslaved. They had to put people to work in order to generate an economy. They didn't, the United States, there was no grocery stores. The United States didn't have an economy, so they had to put those free blacks that just roaming around, loyal to Britain, who got land allotted from the kings and queens of England. All of a sudden, you got to pay ta taxes on the land. How the fuck are you talking about the queen gave this to me? What do you mean, pay tax on the land? There's no taxes. The king allotted it and told me to work this land. So that's essentially what happened. So that's where we are today. And then come United States. Slavery didn't even last 100 years in the United States. So this has been another edition of Melanated News You Can Use. We had a guest this time, special edition of Melanated News You Can Use. Just wanted to make this a little bit more familiar. Uh, let you know all the amazing things that are happening. Keep your eyes on the prize. It is Black History Month. Pay attention to type of token Negroes they're going to keep promoting to you. They're going to continue to give you false narratives, false names. Her name wasn't Harriet Tubman. It was Armenta Ross. And her family was the Ross Stewarts, the subjects of the King of England, King James. And so I hope eventually we can get into the Negro question part six. But you can follow me on Clubhouse. I'm Lady Lila Brown. You can follow me on TikTok. You can find me on Twitter as well. And uh, you can check out our YouTube, Ella B., Media Group is the name of the company. Um, we do a lot of amazing media content, and we focus on stories that positively benefit and that would be well for you to know. I am so uh, adamant about making sure that we have a well-informed republic. So you guys have been awesome. Thank you for sticking around. Thank you for your questions. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for your understanding. And um, until next time, I think we had a great broadcast. Yay! Thank you. Bye. Y'all take care. Good job.